Boy. Uh, Hayden, yeah, you, you were on, uh, people that, on, you're on episode zero. On zero. Yeah. You don't need to be prepared to be disappointed for that one. Don't remind so. me. It's, yeah. like, it's, not a, old. it's not a big deal. It's just, it's just a number. <laughs> you know, we... Uh, we Shouldn't you celebrate 99? Is it, is it, no, wait, isn't no, one one the celebration thing? No, a hundred, whatever. It's a turning point. It doesn't, what a, you know, the, well, you know and, and we're all, and yeah. Also, uh, it's funny cause we got recently on Spotify, uh, and the, I'm, I'm able to look at the metrics and stuff yeah. and a lot of people go back to episode zero to check it out, uh, <laughs> just to see where it started. I guess I, I mean, I do that sometimes with, yeah. if I'm going into a podcast, but so if you count zero, the 99 is when episode yeah, 100. but I mean, whatever, could you count all the special editions that we've had? I mean, we just have to go with a number. You could do some negative ones in there and it kind of like bounces out. <laughs> A negative Ooh. yeah you make some negative ones <laughs> i you know the ones that suck it's like whoa yeah. this was bad that's a yeah. negative one <laughs> you know i i still i still remember the one uh the the blind keyboard challenge yeah that was a great one that was early on yeah uh, that, was... that wasn't cheating either it's i always forward that to people when they say like you can't it doesn't make any difference it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, that was like episode 20 something, I think. Oh, earlier than that, I think. Oh. Earlier, I think it was in the teens, but, uh, you know. We're now, all getting old, guys. Yeah. Now, when I feel, uh, when yeah. I go up to a new keyboard, I, I you know, I press it, I'm like, yeah, can I tell? Can I tell? <laughs> can't tell. <laughs> Only professional like Hayden here. Yeah, right. Yeah. Are we actually live already? Uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, it looks like we're live everywhere. We've got all the friends of the shows. Cool. We got the Wills. We got the Peters. We got the Rusties. Hey folks, we Hadwins. are going to be talking about Allen's, uh, E3 Allies. Gaming Roundup. Hayden, man on the floor. I was on the floor. Uh, actually, barely on the floor this I've year. I've never but, actually gone to E3, uh, honestly. I mean, you, I were, no there on, you were there on Sunday, so. I was nearby. You were, you were in that, <laughs> you were E3 adjacent for one day. Yeah. What's yeah, a, nice. you know, one of the things I missed out with on this year because I didn't go was a Korean barbecue. Did you get some Korean barbecue? I did not, oh, actually. Uh, we ended up getting, it was too hot. Uh, we we yeah. gave up on that idea. Did really? uh, uh, It was like 100 degrees down there. Uh, well, they I mean, can't like make barbecue when it's too here. hot? Come on. No, it was just like, have you they been in a Korean barbecue place? You like sit over a hot stove the entire time. Yeah, but it's all right. It's, it's hot. Worth it. It's worth it if the, the barbecue's good enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. There's kind a place agree. we used to go to in the South Bay, you know, my dude friends. We'd drive an <laughs> hour down friends. there. We'd drive an hour. We would wait an hour. Yeah. And we'd stay there for two hours. Yeah. That's how you We're do it. We're pretty sure we shut that place down because we ate like 800 pounds of meat. No, that's how, that's how you do it. But uh, I would rather do that when it's up here and it's like 70 degrees uh, than True. maybe sweltering in a tiny place in Koreatown. Did uh, you get to go to your your favorite uh, Mexican food oh, place? I did, yeah, yeah, many times. Yeah, uh, yeah, I eat like a burrito every day. You nice. know how it goes. Yeah. Uh, know how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> did uh, did you get to, to bring down any uh, Razor Respawn? Uh, uh, no, but they had, a, by Razor they, had a, they had a booth on the uh, show floor. Oh, uh, you I know, I got I got to tell you, man, respawn. since since we've had it, I've actually been... Have you been drinking it? I've been it? drinking it, uh, oh, and no. I, I've been using the uh, the hints uh -huh. to like pair it, you know. So like I had the blue raspberry with the uh, uh, with, converted with the, you. the cherry, Have and then I had opinion? the watermelon with the watermelon pomegranate. Uh, but now I'm going to go back uh, to the the green apple, the one we hated the most, and see yeah. if it is okay with maybe the green apple hint, you know, Ugh, you know just to see. Braver man than uh, I. Yeah. So, you know, I no, my opinions have not changed since that video. It was your a favorite? good video. You should go watch it. Uh, you haven't changed your favorite? No, nah, I, I still like red the best and then blue the second. Uh, yeah. So I tried that uh, here and then I tried G Fuel on the show floor. Love the one? Uh, no, it's not Logitech. It's just some random. Oh, company. really? Oh, I, I thought I it was Logitech. I don't think it's Logitech. Maybe <laughs> it is, but I don't think so. Uh, the name of that was, and I'm going to quote this Sour Blue Chug Rug. <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw you posted this how, on uh, Twitter, it? didn't you? Uh, it was not good, but also <laughs> what is rug. Chug Rug? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't. I don't want to drink anything that says chug rug. Yeah, in the it name. sounds real gross, right? Uh, <laughs> you have then, to get attention now with the specialty drinks. Well, and then they had market. Bang Energy Drink had a booth on the show floor, and they brought back Booth Babes for the Wait, first time. Bang, in E3? yeah, Bang, B A N G. Okay. Yeah, they brought Booth Babes to E three for the first time in like 
five years. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. There long. was a lot of yikesing uh, going on between people. Oh, uh, that 1987. Film. I mean, hey, it's not like uh, Computex. Computex was in full yeah, force. Yeah. Full booth, wow. babe. Yeah. yeah. Mentality. Hadn't, hadn't experienced that for yeah, a long time. Yeah. E3 really like cracked down on that stuff for a while. Uh, and now it's usually like one booth a year will do something weird. Mm-hmm. And this year it was bang for sure. They had like a bang. full suite of dancers on stage and stuff. <laughs> was uh, the idea just to get attention? Be- oh, Oh, yeah, totally. Like that, I'm maybe, uh, or just get the nerdy dudes to come drink your energy drink. <sighs> no, well, I mean, if it's called which, Chug like, Rug, you're gonna no, need that somebody was the to get other over. one. It was that this was bang. They had oh. pina colada flavor uh, that you can find it in grocery stores. I've seen it since I got back. Really? Uh, but like, I don't feel like you need if you're handing out free energy drink at E3. I feel like you don't need extra attention to get people to come drink your energy drink. Uh, that's a pretty easy sell when you're on the show floor. So, uh, yeah, I drank quite a bit of Bang. It's made by the uh, people that made Redline, actually. Oh, okay. Look so at this. A, uh, bang Energy. Three, th- let, let me let me Some, spring uh, let me spring this on you, Gordon. Three hundred milligrams of caffeine per can. That's a lot. Yeah. Wow. It's, uh, three cups of coffee. That doesn't for you sound at home. safe. Uh, no, you have to be 18 and up. There's an 18 and up, uh, label <laughs> on the can. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. There's, that's a lot of flavors, dude. Uh, yeah, that's we had lo- the pina colada one and the sour heads one. Yeah. I hate sour stuff. Like 300 oh, milligrams. Yeah. Caffeine. 300 milligrams. That's just not. Uh, so yeah, I drank one of those. Uh, the pina colada one was very gross. Yeah. Uh, oh. the sour heads one was better, but I would not <sighs> buy it. All right. All right. Well. So yeah. Anyways, yeah. Uh, disgusting. So E three. Yeah. It's should, over. Should That's we, it. Should we actually start the show? Maybe? Yeah. Let's, yeah. Yeah. Let's <laughs> Gordon, uh, kick this off. Gordon, uh, so are you ready? Energy I mean, drink we could talk about energy drinks all day. But. I'm drinking vitamin water, <laughs> by the way. You labeled it, but yeah. vitamin water. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you're allowed to say it once you've taken the label off. Really? That's the whole reason you take the label off. Yeah. Gordon. Why did you take the label off? I don't know. <laughs> all right. Let's uh, let's do it. In this episode of the Full Nerd E three Gaming Roundup. Next gen console specs and just turn for first piece. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm just really tired. I don't know. It's something weird. It's just something in the air. In this episode of the Full Nerd E3 Gaming Roundup, next gen gaming consoles and streaming versus PC. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I could generate energy. I don't even need 300 milligrams of caffeine drink. A lot of caffeine. I run off my anger. Welcome to the Full Nerd episode 97. I'm your host, Gordon Ma Ung. Brad is off today. Elena is sick. Everybody's sick. But the good news is we have Hayden Dingman, yeah. our, our intrepid sort of games too. reporter, games columnist, fresh from E3. Uh, We're going to talk about everything he saw, but I got to also introduce Adam. Otherwise, he'll just shut us off. <laughs> That's it. Uh, no, I didn't get to go to E3 this year, so uh, we all got to live vicariously yeah, through you. Uh, you know? Gordon, Gordon's one 24-hour stint oh my in God. Los Angeles. That was horrible. I, I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning to get to the airport by 5. I got you know on the plane at 6, and then on the ground, Uber, Lyft, whatever, to the hotel. Yeah. And then I was there all day, and then I left at like eight or nine. My flight was delayed. So not, even, till not even 24 hours. You were just down there for the day. I was down there for the day. I didn't get back to like three o'clock in the morning. Ugh. It was just horrible. Yeah. And I still had to write a story for the next day because, you know. Because yeah. embargo, new the new rising parts. Well, because I would say uh, that to this this year was an amazing year for the PC at E3. What uh, what do we think? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, I feel like we're at that point in the cycle, right, where the consoles are uh, on their way out, as we'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah, uh, and so now we have all the cool PC stuff. Um, PC know, is the way there. to play all these games right now. Uh, I will say, PC Gamer did a uh, did a write up of the Cyberpunk uh, 2077 demo gear rig. Um, apparently, that rig that they ran Cyberpunk on for the demo yeah. was four thousand three hundred dollars or something. So Ooh, wait, uh, I gotta find that Euro when Gamer. I know uh, PC Gamer. Oh, so PC when you when you're curious how much these uh, or what these what these demos are running on at this point it is like a pc with two graphics cards probably uh did it actually support hmm, interesting we'll see i don't know i don't know what they would spend to make the that uh i mean maybe if you put 128 gigs of ram in there or something you could bump that 
Uh, you could definitely, you can easily make a ten thousand dollar maybe a, maybe gaming a PC with you know thirty two core CPU. You could put in a yeah the Xeon the Xeon yeah. W thirty one. Just trying to think of how you would spend that much money on a on a PC these days. No, but easy. No, I mean I mean not that you Xeon? not that you couldn't. I'm just trying to figure out what you would prioritize uh, to hit that forty three hundred dollar price point that would actually matter for your game demo, uh, right? Oh. Duh, RGB. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, you know, I, a lot of those uh, four thousand dollar case. <laughs> yeah. No, I really. I mean, because if you look at a lot of the the boutique folks like the you know Origin. Yeah. Behind us, we got. Uh, 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 oh God, main gear, main gear. Oh, my brain is just fried. See, I need more. Uh, I mean, those machines. You need more respawn. A lot of it is just in bang. the is in the is in the craftsmanship, right? Yeah. I mean, the parts we face it are commodity GeForce, Ry Radeon, Ryzen Core, but yeah, it's all the extra beauty that. Yeah, well, and that's I'm I'm curious what they would prioritize that would make a difference for their demo because like once you hit that 2080 Ti, uh, and then you throw in. Uh, like a mid tier, like a, you could put an eight core processor in there. Yeah, and I mean, probably but, be doing fine. But they don't want to scare people off. I think sometimes they want to like, hey, here's a cool gaming rig we're running down. But they yeah. also don't want to scare people off saying you need a forty three hundred dollars. Oh, PC totally to not. Game, right? uh, but that's what I'm curious. Uh, you know what that'll translate to for? I mean, that game's oh. out, that game's out in nine months. So uh, we'll do you, see. Do we really tracing, think? Right? You know, you, so yeah. you you got to see it again. Obviously, we saw it last year. Do, yeah. do you think it's nine months away, or do you think it's like? Uh, oh, I would have said last year that game was not a this right? gen game. Yeah. So the fact that they said that game is coming out in April. Uh, I'm really curious to see that game running on an Xbox One and mm. not like the Xbox One X, like an actual baseline 2013 Xbox You're One. You're skipping to the next topic. Uh, well, no, he's not. No, no, no. Oh, Xbox right, One X know. is already out. That's the oh. that's the mid-tier upgrade that they oh, wait, did. But is the game already out on that? Or? Uh, no, it's out next, oh. next year. Uh, next April. Uh, and so, yeah, like I'm curious what that'll look like. Uh, I do think that they're putting all those games out in March, April, so that they can then sell you the up-res in the, in the fall. Um, so it's like ne next March and April are looking like, and this kind of is what we're talking about with our uh, 10 best PC games of E3. It's a great article. Check it out on PCWorld.com. Uh, next March and April are looking like some of the craziest months I've seen uh, since I started doing this, it's uh, Cyberpunk is due in April. Uh, Dying Light Two is due in April. Hmm. I think maybe the same day, but I'm not sure. Uh, Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines Two is due in Q1, so you think March, April. Uh, Baldur's Gate Three is due in the Stadia launch window, and Stadia is due to launch to founders in November. So you think, like, if your launch window is six months, that puts it sometime in the spring also. Um, Watch Dogs Legion uh, is a March release. Um, I think that might cover the main one. So that's five. Like And, like, those are not small games. Those are each, you know, 30 to 100 hour games probably. Oh, all serious? releasing in that two or three month span. Um, they try not to land on each other, right? You don't want to like have you yeah, open yeah. But that's the thing is, I I think we're out of time um, because if we are seeing new consoles next holiday, these are all if these are current gen games, everybody wants to get them out before the the console switch over, hmm. uh, and so everybody is just like, well, March April, like we're all going to push them out. Why uh, would they want to get out ahead of the console launches? Uh, so that's why I was saying I think that what they're I think. We don't know how the next gen consoles are going to work, right? But I think what a lot of them are trying to do is the same stuff that we saw this gen, where we'll get a new version of that game, right? But they're trying to do the GTA 5 thing of, hey, we're going to release this game, and then we're going to sell you the nicer version of the game uh, six months later. Wow. Um, so we've heard I, that. And Gordon, I know you don't understand, but we've talked about this before. That actually happens a lot. I, you know, like if, if they, if they sold GTA five on the switch, I'd, I'd buy it for a third time. Yeah. You I know? mean, like that, it just, it happens. That's why like Red Dead Redemption two, everybody's waiting for that to hit PC. And the assumption is it will hit PC yeah. eventually. And I'd buy um, it for a second time. But like time. the reason GTA five has sold a hundred million copies mm -hmm. is in part because they sold a 360 PS three version of that. And then an Xbox One, PS4 version, and a PC version, and now like a Switch version. Uh, same with Skyrim. Like Skyrim has sold so well because that game is on every console forever, and people who've bought it have bought it probably two or three times. Um, but yeah, I'm not curious. I'm not sure what will happen. Uh, 
they've already said that both those next gen consoles are backwards compatible to at least the generation yeah, so before. Why, that's what uh, I don't understand. But like, uh, you could see them maybe selling like a, uh, like uh, selling a 4K texture pack, maybe. Like, okay, hey, right, here's a sure. here's a ten dollar up res, um, something like that. So maybe you're not selling them a full game at that point, but you're still selling them something. Uh, so yeah, we'll see it. Uh, it's going to be a busy spring. It's so uh, interesting because yeah. I mean, PC you just you buy it once, right? I mean, you may buy add on yeah. packs or whatever, but you wouldn't go like, oh, I'm going to buy the ray tracing fe- functionality. Yeah, like it's just included. Well, as a free, and definitely you know, not okay. like within f- you know ten years or something. Like I, there are definitely games I've bought a second time on PC. Yeah, but it's yeah. usually yeah, like ah, this game was you know twenty years old and right. Well, also, uh, if it's on a Steam sale or something, I'm like eh. <laughs> Might yeah, as well shout it to my library. And and I think Microsoft actually is like pushing it a little. So uh we saw uh Age of Empires 2 definitive edition at E3. Oh, okay. Wait, what? And that was like they just did HD edition in 2013 and that was like they've released expansions to that all this. Uh and they're now going to charge you for the definitive edition also. And I was a little skeptical of that. Like, it's only been six years since HD Edition came out. Uh, I bought HD Edition. It's very good. Uh, but then they, I went and met with them, and they're doing some really cool stuff with Age of Empires 2 Definitive. So they're reworking a bunch of the old AI to make the AI not cheat anymore. They're, uh, they're programming it to use actual tactics that are used in tournament play. Um, which was pretty cool. Oh, that's okay. Uh, and then they're doing a bunch of quality of life stuff. So I don't know how mu- how familiar you are, familiar you are with Age of Empires two, but mm-hmm. uh, so they're doing stuff that has become standard in RTSs in the last like fifteen years, but was maybe not standard in nineteen ninety nine when that game came out. Uh, so like selecting. If you like drag and drop across a bunch of units, it will not take your peasant units anymore. <laughs> It'll only select your army because that's what you want. Right. <laughs> uh, because you used to get into a situation where you would like grab a bunch of people and send them off to war and like your three villagers would be marching behind like, oh, Oops. I guess I guess we're going to war, guys. Uh, so they fixed that so you don't just automatically uh, send all your villagers to the death anymore. That's interesting. Uh, so there's neat stuff like that. that People are doing, excited but, for that game. Uh, even so, I was still like, hey, it's only been six years, and they're giving you like a a five dollar discount or something. It's not enough to oh. really. If you if you can show that you had the yeah, the HD you have the, the HD edition, they'll give you huh. five bucks off on Steam. Um, That's interesting. But yeah, that the so like the main stuff and th- a lot of this came out before E3. But like you got Game Pass on PC, yeah, which is cool. What is that exactly? <laughs> And it's, uh, and it's five dollars, right? Is that? I, uh, I feel like I couldn't get of, a, a definitive answer. No, so it's uh, so Microsoft has their subscription service, Game Pass, which has been on console for two years now, uh, and that's uh, Microsoft goes out and curates a third, like a, a hundred games or so, one hundred fifty, uh, a lot of them third party, but then they also put all of their first party games on Game Pass day and date with a release. Uh, and that's been on Xbox for a while. And if you if you had the Xbox Game Pass, you could access Microsoft's games on PC through it, but you couldn't get any of the third party stuff. Uh, so now they've made an actual official PC Game Pass. Uh, and so unlike like EA, EA has a sp- subscription service on PC, but it's like pretty much just EA games, and then a handful of like indie games. Uh, Microsoft actually has the clout to go out there and be like, hey, we want like Bethesda to take part in this. And Bethesda is going to put like uh, Prey and Evil Within, like games like that that are sure. like a little bit older but still current uh, on the subscription service. And it's 10 bucks a month. But if you have the console version. Oh, it's five extra. It's, yeah. So, like, basically, you can get it's 10 bucks a month for uh, Xbox Live, 10 bucks a month for Xbox Game Pass, 10 bucks a month for PC Game Pass, all separate. But you can get all three combined for 15 bucks a month. So, if you play on console and oh. PC, huh. then it ends up only being like a $5 add on. Well, here, here's a scary thought, although we haven't even gotten into the E3 gaming roundup yet. But I, I have to ask this because. For people who used to be big fans of Adobe products, I mean, it's cool that you get the latest version of the Adobe products, yeah. but some people just, I just want to buy Photoshop and never want to deal with it again. Totally. Uh, Are we moving toward that really bad model, I think, with gaming? Uh, 
I think that some people would like us to, and I, I know that that's the concern. I would say the difference right now is Adobe stuff is like 60 bucks a month, um, yeah, which is you uh, ball, wild. Man. But it's a, uh, it's a lot of functionality you're getting. Totally, but uh, sixty bucks a month is a lot. That's like six hundred bucks a year, right? Uh, every year, every year, Forever. which is a lot of money. Uh, whereas, like this, at the moment, at least, is like one hundred and twenty a year, which I think is that's the cost of two games. Uh, and so, if you're playing more than two games a year, that does not seem like a terrible idea yeah. or a terrible value. And you have access to games that maybe you wouldn't already pay. Yeah, for so full like, price. That's you know? Microsoft's line. I went, I went and interviewed Microsoft, and they were very Mr. Uh, Microsoft. Yeah, Mr. Microsoft. <laughs> uh, they were very um, keen on repeating that this is like an additive thing for developers. Like they've seen so so a lot of developers will put one game from a series on the on Game Pass, and then they'll see sales of the other games in the series rise because right. people play the one mm. and then are like oh i want to play this so like you'll notice uh if you, if you look at the pc game pass list uh rise of the tomb raider is on there which is the second game in the series and so uh theoretically what square is trying to do is get you to purchase the original uh the reboot from like 2012 or whatever 2013 uh, and then you can play rise for free and then maybe you'll buy shadow also which is last year's uh, and so you see a lot of that where it's like parceled out in the, in the same way that Netflix does. Yeah. Where yeah. you'll see like one movie from a series on Netflix. It's, it's um, Netflix, yeah. And so, yeah, like I'm not sure uh, whether it'll be a good thing long term or not. Um, Microsoft says that developers get value from it and without seeing their numbers, we can't really uh, dispute that. I will say... Um, having talked to musicians and stuff about Spotify, <laughs> uh, they are not happy with what subscription services have done to revenue for music. Really? Um, yeah. They, well, I mean, they same get, for movies too. Yeah, they know, get paid yeah. out like garbage compared yeah. to people actually buying albums. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, the the counter argument is that nobody's buying albums. Yeah. And so, so they would just pirate it. Yeah. So at least they're getting something from streaming. Yeah. So you just don't really know. Uh, and yeah. that's. Uh, I think it's dangerous because games have had a successful retail model for oh yeah a while now and especially like we've all made the pivot to digital on the PC so this looks a little dangerous um but it'll right. be kind of based on uh how Microsoft ends up treating it I guess yeah um uh to to back up to a to a high level again the um you know with with the new talk of the consoles and all that stuff uh probably a lot around e3 uh did did it have a sense of like hey pc was taking a back seat like most people were showing off you know maybe what the new consoles were or there was focus on consoles or p were people still like hey pc's out there we're demoing this on pc this is still the best experience uh yeah i think pc is still uh the forefront um i can't remember if we were talking about this before we were live or not but the cyberpunk stuff was oh, on a pc mm -hmm. uh yeah uh, because none of those consoles, Dying light. yeah, none of those consoles are on uh, the show floor yet, and so you might they might be using PCs that are target spec for next gen consoles. Yeah. Um, but as far as I know, none of them were running off of the actual hardware mm -hmm. at the show. Um, so yeah, it's it's felt like a very PC year. I mean, that's you went down to see AMD stuff. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's Intel, right? Didn't um, Intel have uh, some announcement around there as well, or mm -hmm. no? more like they just want to throw dirt at amd oh, on there yeah. so i mean that, that, that's like we never used to see that stuff at e3 yeah. the pieces he was never even at e3 for a long time Did, um, amd didn't have a booth right uh i don't think so but oh, okay. plenty of peripherals companies did like mm. peripherals that only make sense for pcs yeah. mm -hmm. um were on the show floor uh it felt like the pc I, as i said we're sort of at that point in the cycle where the new console hardware is not out there yet and so next year you know, maybe that five hundred dollar or whatever console ends up being nicer than your twelve hundred dollar PC, and you're like, oh, now we see all these consoles on the show floor again. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, but at the moment, 
yeah, it seems like so, a very PC show. Interesting. Um, Speaking of PC show, uh, what about the PC gaming show? I actually didn't watch anything on that. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's how, a, how did that go a, off? That was a great uh, transition. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was probably too long again. Yeah. Uh, it, they've been doing that for five years now. And, yeah. and it was uh, sponsored this year by uh, Epic Games. Yeah, Epic Games yeah. Store, which everybody was mad about. <laughs> uh, I love the PC gaming show because it's all the weird stuff. Yeah. Um, so and it, it's PC. So they put the Planet Zoo trailer in the PC gaming show mm. and I'm incredibly excited for that game. <laughs> uh that's on our on our list somewhere. <laughs> uh Should we go we we should go through this list. I I want to see what the list is. Uh yeah, uh, we could go through uh, it. Let's do it. Uh, uh I mean, so Outer Worlds, which is uh Obsidian's new game, that's the uh it looks like they made Fallout New Vegas but without the Fallout license. Hell yeah. Uh, that's I'm how down. that's how <laughs> later this year. Hell yeah. Um they, without the Fallout license. Yeah, like because Bethesda won't let them make another Fallout New Vegas. Uh it looks like they pretty much cloned <laughs> a lot of that tech and uh made their own game and their own setting. It looks awesome. Uh yeah, it it was incredible. They have it, and it's hilarious too. They have like um so like we had a mission where we had to go invade like a meat factory and once we got in the meat factory we found out that it was uh the animals were called sista pigs and they were like pigs with tumors that grew on their neck and they just oh. fall off when they're ready to be harvested and it was like oh sustainable meat product uh it's <laughs> oh. like a very like there are a lot of jokes about like corporate language and stuff uh, in, I see. Uh, in outer worlds so no, okay nice. sorry it's so very relevant number 10 uh so yeah was, uh, they're not really in order but yeah Number ten, sure. Number nine, uh, yeah, well, Watch Dogs <laughs> Legion, which uh, I don't know if you guys saw the trailer for that or followed any of it. Um, but I was a big fan of Watch Dogs Two, yeah. which was set here in the Bay, uh, and I didn't really know how they would follow that up. Uh, they followed it up by uh, they're going to London, but more than that, Clint Hawking, who is the one of the guys from Far Cry Two, uh, which is a respected game because it was very weird for Far Cry. Uh, that was the one where you had to stave off malaria the whole time. Uh, they've built in tech where you can recruit anyone in the game to your group, basically. Mm. Uh, so like you can walk around and it'll be like a, uh, like a grandma in a pub and you can like get her whole backstory and then you can, re can recruit her into your group and then play as her through the entire story. And they have like wow. 12 different versions of the script. Uh, they have a bunch of like voice modulation tech to like give everybody different voices. Uh, and then 12 or so different animation sets. Uh, and so I played as like a bunch of grandma ladies. I just like, that was my whole demo. I played for about an hour uh, and I played as only grandmas and, uh, they change like how you move and stuff. So as a grandma, you kind of like do like the power walk instead of actually running. Uh, and then you can climb up walls, but it takes like five seconds. Like she like gets up and then she like kind of like struggles to get up the wall. That's funny. Uh, and then, yeah, like all of the, the dialogue is tailored to each specific person. So you can play as like a, um, you know, you could play as like a bunch of soldiers or whatever, but you can play as like grandmas or just like a bunch of old dudes who are in a, in a pub together. Uh, and sort of like set up your own stories about like how these people got recruited. Uh, they were quick to point out like if you went one of our missions, we went to Scotland Yard and we had to like steal some tech out of Scotland Yard. And they were like, you get to recruit all the guards in here also. Uh, so it's not just like people on your side. Wow. Everybody in the game is like on a uh, on like a meter that says like they're for or against you. And you can <laughs> eventually convince all of them to join you. Uh, um, so we'll see how it actually works in reality because that sort of procedural stuff sometimes sounds really cool in theory like uh no man's sky and oh. then you get it and you're like ah actually the strings are very apparent here and yeah. like it doesn't actually feel natural yeah um, but uh, it sounds well, cool ruru 2 is asking uh, uh if you can play as gordon maong yeah that'd be fun uh, i hope i hope <laughs> that he's in there somewhere uh, yeah he won't work with the controller though i mean yeah. that's like that uh that's like that million typewriters million monkeys thing right <laughs> like uh, i'm sure he's in there if the rules bounce around enough so uh <laughs> Yeah, no, number eight. Number eight, uh, Cyberpunk. Which no actual. We've sort of list here, but. we've sort of talked about. Oh um, yeah, Cyberpunk. That that does look like it, Keanu like, they, Reeves is in it. They really paid him for it. Yeah, I, and, and you know I I liked him coming out on stage too. He was yeah. like quirky, just nerdy. Yep, he like, was great. Yeah. 
Uh, if you haven't watched that moment, yeah, uh, good you should moment. watch it. It was great. Uh, it also was really fun. Then people started making memes of because uh, he came out and he was like, check it out. And he pointed at the screen and everybody started replacing what was on the screen with <laughs> dumb stuff. Uh, so that was fun. Yeah. Uh, yep. wa- watch Point Break if you've never watched Point Break. Ah. Uh, yeah, Cyberpunk looks great. I don't know. The, it's hard to say much else at this point. Um, it's it very, seems like that was like the the headliner out of it. Yeah, movie. it's very impressive yeah. and very ambitious. And the fact that it's out in April is shocking. Um, and then not only that, but Keanu is apparently everybody kind of thought he was just like making a cameo, but apparently he has the most lines of anybody except for the really? main character in wow. the entire game. So they like really got him in. He was into huh. it. Um, so yeah, uh, I also, I don't think this is on our list, um, but I can't remember, uh, it might be on the list, but I played John Wick Hex that, uh, like turn, it's not turn-based, but that like sort of turn-based John Wick game that, uh, people are making. Uh, I think it's Mike Bithell from, uh, he made Thomas Was Alone and Volume, uh, which I don't know why I looked at Gordon because Gordon has not played either of those games. No, no. I've um, seen the movie. Uh, Thomas is alone. I'm, I'm familiar with the volume. I'd, I'd yeah, know. so it, they're making this game called John Wick Hex. It's like an official adaptation of the the movies, and it's like a top down strategy game. Uh, and oh there yeah, it is yeah. on here. Uh, it, they call it a timeline strategy game because it's not actually turn based, but it's also not real time. Uh, everything is governed by like a timeline at the top, so every move that you make takes a certain amount of of time to do. Uh, and so it'll be like uh, like jabbing takes less time than like a takedown. Uh, I think there's some actual gameplay towards the end of the the end of the trailer. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's interesting. So like everything is like. Everything takes a certain amount of time, so it'll be like, oh, a takedown takes like two seconds, and if a guard parries you, that only takes like half a second, and so he'll parry you, and then you'll change your move to like, you know, throw your gun at him. <laughs> That's uh, cool. So that was like a really neat, I mean, also Keanu, but a really neat uh, strategy thing that I haven't seen before. I've played plenty of real-time games uh, and plenty of uh, turn-based games, but it was a neat combination of the two in a way uh and then they're supposed to have a replay function at the end that'll just play everything back for you in real time so you can watch you just like run around and and flip everybody on their backs um yeah it was a it was a cool old a cool demo okay uh, i'll say a very hard game i think to explain yeah yeah. there's no like easy parallel but um so yeah planet zoo uh we mentioned this up top uh it's from the people who made planet coaster um which was uh it's frontier they also make elite which mm-hmm. is a weird it's weird that, that company makes elite dangerous and also yeah planet coaster um, but i like planet coaster a lot uh it was like roller coaster tycoon for the modern era and they had a really great suite of building tools um so you could build pretty much anything in that game <coughs> you're building uh, a zoo yeah so this one now planet zoo you're building a zoo uh, it's basically zoo zoo tycoon uh, which Frontier also, that. so Frontier, and I didn't realize this when they released or when they revealed Planet Zoo. Uh, Frontier made that plant, uh, sorry, made that Zoo Tycoon game at the beginning of the Xbox One era, uh, which I don't know if uh, you even remember because <laughs> I barely remember it. But it was like one of the launch games for the Xbox One. Really, was a Zoo Tycoon game back <laughs> in 2013. The huh. original original Xbox, the Intel based one. No, 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 no. So they, so like back. Uh, Xbox One. You know, early, early days, yeah, they had Zoo Tycoon, but no, Xbox One, like the current Xbox. Uh, oh, oh, uh, oh. I know, the name is... Not the original Xbox, but the Xbox yeah, the, One. the current <laughs> Xbox One. <laughs> Xbox uh, Three. So it was yeah. that kind of greenish one, I but remember. But not 360. Yeah, no, not yeah. the not that one. The, the current <laughs> Xbox One. Not that one. This oh, one. Jesus. Uh, yeah, so they, they made the Zoo Tycoon that came out in 2013. So this is, I guess, building on that. Um, huh. And okay. building on... They also made that Jurassic World uh, building game uh, like I wanted to, I wanted to play that so bad, I just never had time. Um, yeah. This one seems like it... So Jurassic World was really limited in what you could build. Uh, this one is a lot cooler. They So they showed off... Um, with they had a chimpanzee enclosure, and you can build like the custom like log. Uh, you know how like every chimpanzee enclosure has like logs for them to climb oh, on yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, you can build those like piece by piece, and then the chimpanzees will actually use them. Like they've been trained, uh, they've been programmed and passed to like use the things you put in the oh, that's enclosure. Cool. Uh, so they'll also like if you put trees in there, they'll swing through the trees you put in. 
um, pretty neat. Uh, and then the animation is just really good. They uh, got us like real up and close with a bunch of the animals, like the alligators and uh, zebras and stuff. Mm. Uh, and all of them look fantastic, and they're uh, animated pretty realistically. And they will just like wander around and eat, hang out. Nice, um, sweet. So, so yeah, it seemed really neat uh, in a very zen sort of way. Yeah, I'm sure okay. you could also play. You know let all the lions out of the enclosure and have them eat everybody. Of course. But. That's the fun part. I wonder how to deal with, I mean, because there are people who really think animals shouldn't be in zoos. Kind of yeah. like, are there protests? Uh, like they're that? definitely like on a on a modern zoo that with like the huge enclosures oh, right, right. and all that. So they they have like a minimum size. Not like per, San Francisco Zoo. Also, you know? also so. it's a game. Uh, that too. Game. But yeah. no, they have like a minimum size per animal and stuff so that you don't overcrowd them. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, nice. they, they seem like they've really tried to put some thought into it. So. Nice. All right, um, next up, number who knows? Yeah, Dying Light 2. Uh, again, yeah. a lot of that was from last year. Yeah. Um, really? They basically have taken Dying Light, which was a zombie game with some parkour, and then turned it into like a branching storyline game. Uh, and so this year we saw a lot more of that. Uh, at a bunch of points in the demo there was like a hard left right on the analog stick choice of uh like one of them was like <laughs> I, I, sorry yeah, i just I had to his, point out gordon's face yeah. <laughs> when you said analog stick that was pretty no, good no i just i because I, I think i tried i don't know if it was dying light or whatever yeah. but like oh you've got to hold the elevator left right left right I was like, oh my god really no no, no. these that are move these are these are uh these were choices based so it'd be like <laughs> uh the first one in the demo um you basically you're setting up a deal or you're trying to set up a deal between multiple factions and the guy who is on your side uh, while you're not down there, it gets shot. And so you run down, you're like, oh my God, what happened? They're like, Frank's been shot. And <laughs> Frank, no. Immediately, like the first choice was um, you can either chase after the people who apparently shot him uh, or you can stay with him and try and find a doctor. Uh, and um, not to, you know, spoil this pivotal spoilers story moment, um, but if you go after the van, which we did in the demo, and it sounds like that was the way the demo went in general. Uh, Frank dies and they oh, were very Frank. clear about like, Hey, if you don't go after the van, he might live, huh. um, with other consequences, presumably for letting the van get away. Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, it was, a uh, like, that's like, a, he's one of the main story characters and they just killed him off in this demo. Uh, and so those sorts of things seem really fascinating. Uh, and we had a bunch of them during the demo and it ended with, uh, we could either choose to turn on these water pumps and give the rest of the city water uh, or not. And this guy was saying, like, hey, you really shouldn't do this. We have these pumps, you know, turned off for a reason. <laughs> uh, you don't listen to them. You kill them. You turn the pumps on. And uh, it drains an entire section of the city that he had, like, set up as a moat. Oh, and cool. so the rest of the city gets water, which then sort of feeds into some stuff we saw last year, which was a... um. Like, once they have water in the city, they, uh, like, everybody's happier and, and there's less riots. Mm -hmm. um, but there were, like, new zombies that came out of the ground after we drained this section of the city. Uh, and then uh, Techland was very clear about uh, once you drain that section of the city, that's all explorable. Um, so if you play, you if you had a playthrough where you just left that moat intact, you would never see anything that was in that section of the city because it would be underwater. Interesting. Sounds um, like so the, sounds the Telltale ambitious. game sort of gave you those, totally. those branching, and it would affect the totally. But the this game. is oh, like yeah, no, the, but this is to a different degree. Yeah, this is like sure, the the, yeah. the size of these choices are so huge, and especially like the the Telltale stuff was always like very tightly controlled. Um, yeah. yeah, camera angles and all that. Yeah, very little action. Uh, this is like they said it, when you finish this game, you'll have seen about 50% of the stuff they've made for the game um, oh. on any given playthrough because uh, got it. a lot of them are these binary choices of like, oh, well, now I'm just never going to see this quest line. I'm never going to see this whole area, all that. <gasps> interesting. Uh, Crazy. Interesting idea. Yeah. Yep. And it, like that's again, I didn't think that would be a pre console switch over a game but apparently that's out next spring hmm. um so yeah we'll see yeah. Uh, it sounds really amazing but nice. uh, like any e3 demo you know it's, it seems we'll like see. it sort of is trying to drive you know a lot of the, the zombie genre today is sort of like these hard choices you have to make yeah and, you know like the walking dead is like except they just like let's just stay here for for four episodes because we don't want to pay for a new set kind of thing <laughs> 
Carl. Yeah. <laughs> Carl. Uh, well, what about number 10 on the list? Uh, I think we're not at number 10 yet, but no, no, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, uh, not much yeah. to say here except yeah. it was revealed. Um, and mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it. That's and, we, and we can talk a little bit more about the Stadia stuff uh, with it uh, yeah, in that's a little bit. A, so yeah, Baldur's Gate 3, it's been 20 odd. I mean, not 20, but it's been almost 20 years since Baldur's Gate 2 came out. Um, and there's been rumors about Baldur's Gate 3 at various studios for a while now. Uh, and then last year, they actually pinned it down and somebody said Larian was working on this. And Larian denied it. Uh, and lo and behold, they're working on it. So... Uh, they said it's an adaptation of 5th generation or 5th edition D&D, so uh, no Thacko, and um, that's about all we know. Huh. Okay. Um, but yeah, Stadia, yeah. I don't know if we want to talk about Stadia. We'll talk, we'll talk about it at the yeah. end. Uh, John Wick Hex, we saw Forza uh, Horizon. Forza Horizon's getting a Lego expansion. Yeah. Uh, it's already out. You can go play it. Uh, I oh, played, really? Yeah, oh, no. I haven't I touched sh- it yet. Sh- it came yeah, out on the, the last Thursday. I haven't touched it yet, but the demo I played at the Microsoft Showcase was fantastic. Uh, they've made all the cars blocky. And uh, <laughs> it looks it looks great. Yeah, I love Lego. It's amazing. You like go through like a haunted forest at one point in the demo. Uh, it's just a real fun time. Oh, and nice. I, I heard an interview with uh, some of the devs saying that it really messed with their physics model because uh, the you know the like the air wrapping around the car yeah. like totally got messed up when the car <laughs> blocks uh, came in. So they they had to kind of retool it for some of those cars. It sounds cool, and especially to to be able to like destroy legos and uh yeah there's a lot of like little park because you could like blow through uh like stone fences and stuff in forza horizon 4 but now you're just like blowing through block fences which is a lot more fun they like explode all over that actually looks like fun yeah it's great uh and the it it follows on the back of forza horizon 3 which had that hot wheels expansion uh and i didn't know how they would top that but uh this to me feels like a good way to do it well, um, what what about price? Sorry, I, I know I was uh, bringing not, this up, but I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, I'm not sure. I would assume if it's like twenty, fifteen or twenty. Yeah, if it's twenty, I, uh, I would totally they, grab they it. But they included the expansions in the ultimate edition this time, which they didn't do before. So oh. uh, that's actually really nice. They used huh. to um, you would get the car pass with the ultimate edition, but you wouldn't get the actual expansion content. Um, Forza Horizon Four, they finally included both, uh, so you could just play it. Hmm. Um, yeah. so yeah, there's that. And then, uh, doom, which looks like doom. I mean, um, but and, dude, this is like game of the show for me. I'm so excited uh, for more play doom. The trailer. Like, I, I'm, oh I'm my interested God. In this. I mean, it's just, it's more it's doom just people dying. Um, uh, yeah. Like doom was, uh, and they have a grappling hook. This oh, time. okay. Uh, doom oh, is a awesome. Grappling hook. Um, so yeah, you can pull yourself towards enemies, uh, and shoot it, them. It looks so good. I, I, I need, I've, I think I've played through the Doom 2016 like at least four times now. I think. Yeah. And I'm, man, I, I need an excuse to to play another Doom. Yeah, I'm excited that they're leaning into the dumb, uh, like Doom guy canon that they've built. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the where, Doom Slayer. Yeah, Doom Slayer is just like an actual character now. Uh, oh, that, that stuff that, is real oh, fun. Oh, that 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 grappling hook looks good. Oh, I'm so excited for this. <laughs> So yeah, Doom looks great. Uh, they are no longer your people to save. <laughs> yeah, it looks tough. You gonna play I'm this, excited. Gordon? What? You gonna play this, Gordon? Yeah. I mean, I you know did I you was play a huge... the, did you play 2016? I played part of it, but then I just got tired of looking for stuff and I gave up. You know, <laughs> no, that's not how you're supposed to play it. You're supposed no. to shoot stuff, well, dude. No, you get, eventually like I, I'm just lost. I'm just lost, right? I'm in this stupid cave, and I just like I need more ways to just. I don't have the. It's it's not really a high attention span kind of a game, I would think. So what? I, I just want to run through and blow stuff up. Why would you well, like have and, to think And that's like, oh, what that gotta, game was. I have to find the right way to Are you playing get out. the right game? That's Yeah, because I got stuck in some stupid cave somewhere. You know, like, <laughs> I don't know where to go. Oh, uh, well. Uh, that sounds like a... Yeah, but I like the ground. grappling hook yeah. because uh, <laughs> I, I was a huge fan of the the, uh, the lithium mod on Quake 2, so hopefully uh-huh. the grappling hook. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking and forward to that killer. one. And that one's out this year, so uh, unlike a lot of these. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, I'm so excited. End of the year. I'm so excited. Uh, we also have Wolfenstein coming out in July. So, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I always wow. forget about that. Coming but, soon. But yeah, the, so then final game on here is uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines so, 2. 
Yeah, you uh, you you sent me a gameplay demo, and there was some uh, man. There was a lot of back and forth in the uh, the YouTube comments on that of people yeah. saying like, "Oh, I'm so excited for this," and then on the other side saying like, "That this looks janky as hell." Uh, hell? I, yeah, I agree. Um, it is janky. Uh, hopefully, they'll get it polished out before launch. I think anybody that played the original Bloodlines, uh, that game was notoriously janky yeah and, uh, and people uh, were saying like actually they kind of liked that some of that charm well not know? not only that but like that a lot of that was fixed by fans uh of the originals there's a fan patch that i think is up to like <laughs> 10.5 or something uh wow. in terms of versions right. that, that somebody worked on for you know the last 15 years so um who knows maybe bloodlines 2 comes out and it's buggy as hell but uh I, for me, that's not why you're playing. Like I'm playing for the story stuff, and the story stuff in there is really good. Uh, all the characters that they showed were um, like super memorable from even just the you know 10 minute or 15 minute demo that we saw. Uh, so there was like a a guy called Slug, uh, Nosferatu, uh, and Nosferatu are not allowed to out in the daytime, or like they're not allowed to be seen by anybody because they they're right. so ugly that it immediately is like, oh, that's a vampire. <laughs> Um, and so he was like this quivering, I don't know, begging guy that we ended up, I think in the gameplay I sent you, he ends up getting killed, uh, in the demo I that I so. saw, I spared him. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely a jank. Like we had a problem. Uh, we, I actually had you edit that video, uh, because in our demo, the, uh, the demo person tried to show me like a hey like here i'll show you that other power and set the police off and then Oops. she ran up the side of a building to finish the quest and the police just kept shooting at us the whole time we were finishing the quest <laughs> and they were like uh yeah uh so there's definitely uh stuff that needs to be fixed and it definitely needs to be optimized um but i love the way they've they've really nailed seattle um for i mean I'm, i don't live in seattle but i've been to seattle uh pioneer square looks really good um and then yeah all of the story stuff so i actually just finished i replayed the original bloodlines and finished it last night hmm. and um that game still holds up nice. in a lot of ways the back half of that game is not great but the front half of that game is still very good hmm. and if they i mean they've got brian mitsoda the original uh, lead writer on Bloodlines back for the sequel. Uh, he seems very passionate about making the game as good as they can this time. Uh, and Paradox, I think, has something to prove also because Paradox has been like a mid-tier publisher for a yeah. long time. And this seems like the game that could maybe push them out of that. Mm. Um, Interesting. Like th This looks like a jank aside in the the gameplay demo like the trailer looks like a full-on triple a game yeah, um, yeah and so it'd be cool to see paradox uh you know elevate itself through this game mm. to that like top tier status um nice but we'll see we got uh we'll, we're supposed to get hands on with that uh later in the year so okay um, uh, a, a funny other side note in the the second half of the gameplay that uh, the studio provided for us, yeah, uh, was also featured in an IGN video. So everyone was like, "Oh, you're ripping off IGN!" Nope. Uh, great, great journalistic integrity. Uh, PC we were, world, we were not. That was the B-roll <laughs> they provided us, yep. and uh, <laughs> yeah. the reason that it was provided to us and that we used it was because, yeah, the second half of that demo uh, went off the rails. So um, yeah, a little peek behind the curtain there yeah, of yeah. how shows work yeah. i have another question too because i i saw it came up with the call of duty preview video you did yeah people said like this looks like it's on a console they didn't believe it was on a pc but yeah you did say that there's weird thing not call of duty it was a uh, uh, ghost recon oh ghost recon they made you play with the xbox yeah controller ghost recon they made us reason? play with a controller uh and yeah, this, a lot of people are like also, what i would have denied it i would have said no i'm not gonna do it uh that's not how these work <laughs> I, I, so i can give you another peek behind the curtain yeah but, please uh, the reason that they usually make us play on controllers is because uh usually they have debug keys mapped to everything on oh. the keyboard mm. Uh, and so usually they don't want, so there are a couple of games that they let us play mouse and keyboard on the show floor, but that's pretty rare. Uh, and usually it's because, well, first of all, there's a couple reasons. First of all, <laughs> controllers much cheaper than mice and keyboards. 
Uh, also much easier for them to bring to the show. So if they have to set up like 50 demo stations, they're going to use controllers because 50 controllers, they can fit in a box, uh, 50 mice and keyboard. Uh, that's a, okay. I don't buy any of those to, reasons, but a lot to carry to the show. <laughs> I think it was Gordon and the, uh, trolling in the comments. Uh, uh yeah. but then on top of that, yeah, the debug command. So like we've had, uh, I've had games where they let us play on mouse and keyboard and they are like, you cannot touch the numbers one through five or whatever, because it'll just like warp you to a different part of the map or warp you to a different part of the demo. <clears throat> uh, in fact, that happened this week. I played a demo for a game called moons of madness, which is a fun calm game. Okay. And, uh, they, they up front, they were like, Hey, you can't hit one through five. Cause it'll change what part of the demo you're at. And, uh, about, two minutes into the demo i didn't think about that and i was just messing around on the keyboard i hit number three and it teleported me halfway through the demo and then i had to hit number two and hope that it was close enough to where i started whoops uh that i could get back into the demo okay i i I can buy that uh so yeah there's a lot of like people have no clip mapped onto certain keys they have all sorts of like debug commands mapped so uh, yeah, that's usually the reason why we're on controllers. Okay. okay. Um, but you, you, so yeah, this was played, the developer played our vampire stuff that was on a controller. And then, yeah, I played ghost recon also on a controller, but it was a PC. You saw the PC. Yep, it was on a PC. Physically eyeballed. Yep. Okay. But it was on a PC for ghost recon, but it was with a controller. Um, and okay. I don't, I don't think, I mean, I know that you are vehemently anti-controller. No, not for certain uh, games. And, yeah. And I, and I wouldn't <laughs> necessarily play. Uh, Vampire or Ghost Recon on a controller. Uh, Ghost Recon because it's a shooter. Vampire because right. it's first person. Yeah. Um, but there are definitely games that I just don't care. Uh, <clears throat> like if, it, if it, we do all of our Assassin's Creed demos at shows, for instance, on a controller, and that's how I would play that game at home anyway. So uh, I'm sure there are people out there that play Assassin's Creed with a mouse and keyboard, but uh, that seems very cumbersome. Hmm. So yeah, there's certain games where it's better. But, yeah. You know. But yeah, so that's the the peak behind the curtain. It's usually debug, uh, and then the the challenge of transporting all those controls to a show floor. From. Also, I, I would think uh, because of the the thumbstick movement and like less panning and stuff, it, it makes it more smooth or you yeah, know, probably for a, yeah, yeah for video visual capture and all that too. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's, right. there there are a lot of reasons. Uh, oh, that was the list. Yeah, that was the list. That was all ten. That was all ten best games. Console of- stuff. Is well, that- actually, real quick, I, I do have uh, one lingering, lingering question from uh, Renee uh, asking if you saw anything uh, VR related. Did anyone talking about VR? Anything? Um, yeah. So I played uh, Sniper Elite VR, and it was good. And that's about it. Uh, we hmm. purposefully don't make VR appointments or i i guess i because i'm in charge of scheduling uh that's not a priority at e3 because e3 has uh all these peaks behind the curtain Uh, i was in in meetings basically from like 10 a.m until close which was 7 p.m most days uh every single day uh just like one back-to-back meeting after another um and so uh, and that was without vr games and i'm the only one that covers e3 for us so usually that's not the priority uh vr stuff doesn't so there was vr stuff there we yeah, just didn't prioritize VR, it. vr games especially don't really do traffic but mm-hmm. like yeah oculus had a booth uh, in fact facebook had three booths at the show uh-huh. um booth yeah. booth space cheap, was right? cheap this yeah. year so uh, <laughs> it's just people are i mean it definitely was in the long slog yeah you know. and well, so like a, a bunch of uh, vr stuff is happening right now i think vr is really probably the most interesting it's been since before the original consumer launch because we have the valve index launching this month uh the oculus stuff just came out last month and uh that hp headset just came out Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. uh and so like everything is really cool right now um there's a lot of neat ideas floating around and i wanted to get over the oculus booth at one point but it's yeah not a priority yeah um okay and so we'll see i'm sure there's stuff coming out soon uh that Lone Echo 2, uh, I heard, was back at E3, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, uh, also, uh, sorry to, to wrap up another E3-related question. Uh, Elvis is asking uh, if he saw any new keyboards, any anything of note from the, the peripheral uh, manufacturer. We did, but we can't talk about any of it, I'm okay. pretty sure. Uh, well, stay tuned for on PCWorld.com <laughs> for that yeah. coverage. It's always funny to me because it's like it's some keyboard manufacturers really treat it like this is special stuff it's yeah like, oh really you got next generation intel well, Ryzen, well, last year we saw the GPU. razor uh opto mechanical switches yeah, well, we you know. know logitech had their blue switch yeah, last year yeah. uh it is a big deal right yeah so i so i think a lot of the 
Um, a lot of the manufacturers keep that stuff under embargo after the show so that it can get out away from the news crunch because nobody's going to write up like, ah, there's a new keyboard from such and such uh, at during the show when there's a million other things to cover. But right. they might write it up like two weeks after the show because July, there's nothing going on. So at least so. they saw it. Yeah. Yeah. So we've seen some stuff, um, but nothing okay. that we can talk about. Okie doke. Then that's, uh, why don't we move on to... Uh, Except energy drinks. Oh, Just yeah. So energy, energy drinks. drinks. Yeah. yeah. Watch the pre-show for, uh, drink. for that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you do. Uh, well, you want some respawn yeah, want by some, Razor? You want yeah. some respawn, buddy? <laughs> I have some tea here, yeah. actually, because our coffee's so bad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the uh, the console. Yeah, they, new you know, there, There's been uh, information about the new consoles, Navi related, Ryzen related, focuses on SSDs. Uh, you know, uh, we kind of know Gordon's take going into it, but people no, you don't. People want to hear, you know, uh, what what we think about the uh, the new consoles versus the P. I think the SSD stuff is real neat. So uh, we should detail that. What do you yeah, mean so, by the new SSD so stuff? So this is uh, first of all, let me say we have PS5 specs, sort of, and uh, Project Scarlet, which is Microsoft's mm-hmm. Xbox follow-up. Which you wrote up about that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, that, that was during the show, and the PS5 stuff came out about a month ago. Uh, both of them are almost exactly the same, from what we can tell. Uh, looking at like just the specs that are out there which admittedly are not many specs. Um, But looking at the specs that are out there, they're basically the same box. Um, And the thing that they both hinge on is the SSD. And they're both touting, Microsoft and Sony are both touting the exact same thing, which is no load times, uh, which doesn't sound... I like we've had SSDs on the PC for forever. (laughs) Uh, And we still have load times. Um, But theoretically, the idea is... Because now the consoles will have uh, SSDs, then people will actually program for the SSD. Uh, and the way that Sony Sony has phrased it is it's like uh, uh, faster than even the SSDs that we're using on PC because it's console-based, right? So they know exactly what the specs are. For yeah, everything. I personally took that as a burn, <laughs> but um, yeah. some people here don't think that's a burn when they say they're... I think Sony, exa- they said exactly our SSD will be with more available bandwidth than any PC. Yeah. Which I don't know about you, but I think that's a burn. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that's a burn. And who knows how true true it actually is. Uh, We'll we'll have to wait for digital trends to break down the box in six months. I mean, but... Um, and also, real quick, to Timothy, do, do we know that it's just an NVMe SSD in there? No, uh, we don't. Or is it new tech? Yeah, that's the thing. They, Sony made it sound like it's new tech entirely. Octane? Uh, just and so we just... I don't it, think so. It's hard it's to know. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's hard to know what that stuff will look like. Um, Microsoft, uh, from their Scarlet stuff, was very clear about using the SSD as RAM um, for the console virtual, as well. Yeah, virtual yeah. RAM. Um, which would be, we might actually see some games take more than 16 gigs of RAM, uh, finally. I know. Also, Um, also I got to say, just two generations ago, it wasn't a given that a console even had a hard drive. I mean, the the Xbox 360. Yeah, yeah, 360 had launched with a no hard drive version. Yeah, so a lot of... A lot of the optical drive? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and so yeah, a lot of yeah, like you know, game, a lot game of games installs. were held back because it was like, oh well, we we have to go to min spec, and the minimum Xbox 360 had no hard drive. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Game, to think. game installs didn't even become a thing until like midway through the 360 gen. That yep. was like a yeah. that was like a four years into the 360 gen mm-hmm. was yep. like game installs on console. Um, and I feel like both Sony and Microsoft, uh, looking at this next generation, have been better about. Uh, putting specs in here that seem like they're thinking about the future, even if none of those specs are actually going to be taken advantage of. So, like, right in the headline here, uh, Microsoft Mm -hmm. is like, we've got ray tracing. Uh, And maybe they do, um, but I can't imagine it's going to be the same um, sort. Like, you're not getting... A 2080 Ti is, like, what, a $1,200 card? Yeah. They're not selling this xbox at twelve hundred dollars uh if they do i will eat some of that rice paper <laughs> no got, it's just real got, paper yeah that paper we got kicking around well we uh, still have the paper that says uh what was that game that hasn't launched uh, uh star citizen yeah, star yeah. Citizen. we don't have to worry about that one <laughs> yeah um, that's still waiting for you at some point so yeah ray tracing 
Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, it might be on there in some capacity. They Shader might base, support right? it, is but like, you're not, you're not getting 20 ATI quality out of these boxes, presumably. Uh, and, and the same goes with, um, uh, I'm trying to think of like some of the other, oh, the 8K. Like they're like they're already like oh yeah we got 8K support in Project Scarlet mm-hmm. and like yeah it might output natively yeah. to 8K scale but like developers are not going to be running no the, the next game gen will not games be running it at yeah. 8K native uh, and so for them to come out and say some of these things um, it's like yeah it's good that you're thinking about this I also don't think anybody is ever going to do it. same with uh they. 120 hertz capability is finally in these new consoles. They're talk, talking about it, yeah. And so theoretically, you could see, uh, like Forza, for instance, saying, "Hey, we'll give you a mode that's medium quality, 120 hertz, or even medium quality, 60 hertz, uh, and then you know a high quality, 30 hertz sure. experience." But like the number of developers that are actually going to run their games at 120 hertz is going to be like five percent. And it's mostly yeah. gonna be indie games, and it's because indie games are less uh, load on that system. Well, and, like these uh, current consoles support sixty hertz. Yeah, nobody makes sixty hertz games except Call of Duty and like Forza, I or, think. or like fighting games. You know, uh, yeah, fighting games. Sure. Yeah. So I, I think that that probably won't change. They always seem yeah, to like they prefer just, uh, it, thirty hertz over, plus. Yeah. Uh, it'll it'll be thirty hertz. I mean, I'm I'm gonna call it right now. Next gen, the min spec will be 30 hertz, maybe 1440p, but probably 1080 for a lot of these games still. Yeah. yeah. And it'll just look really good because that's what they always do. They've done it every time. Our current gen consoles support 60 hertz. They support 1080p. The baseline Xbox One and PS4 cannot run any games basically at 1080p. Yeah. Uh, they can't run them at 60 hertz. And so, yeah, like, it's fine for them to say they're supporting all these things, but, like, you're still going to get a better experience probably out of a PC, um, which is why the SSD probably stuff... Probably is probably not the word I yeah, use, but... certainly. <laughs> which is why the SSD stuff, to me, is the most interesting part of this. It is interesting, yeah. it's the only thing that I think the new consoles are doing that will push the PC forward in a meaningful way. Yeah, it's, because it's kind of leapfrogging. Been, yeah. yeah where, we, where exactly is the leapfrogging? Well, well, because like I still have, for instance, a bunch of 7200 RPM hard drives, and for years that's been good enough to run pretty much any game. Uh, I'm foreseeing, and again, I'll eat some paper if this doesn't happen, <laughs> but I'm foreseeing in like the next three or four years uh, you will probably need an SSD to run these games on PC. I think that developers are going to stop optimizing for 7200 HDDs, and I think you're going to start seeing requirements for SSDs. Because we're already, uh, in certain open world games, I already have problems with load streaming off of a 7200 hard, uh, hard drive. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, most recently, I want to say, like, Rage 2. Uh, I was having problems on a hard drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthem was notorious because uh, at release the hard drive load times were like three minutes long or something um, yeah. because they, it's just not a priority for a lot of de- developers anymore. Uh, I think that we're going to get to a point next gen where uh, if you're running off a hard drive, it's going to not be enough to run some of these games or you're going to have a very compromised experience uh, where you start seeing the pop in and stuff like that. Maybe. Yeah, it's, to it's, a greater extent. It's funny. When I go all the way back to the original SSDs on PC when they, from the late night, well, early, God, God, when the hell was that? I guess early 2000s. Mm-hmm. You know, and Intel was demonstrating like, look, if you run an SSD, y- you will actually get higher frame rates in some games. Yeah. You know, but it was like, nobody ever took advantage of that. No developers ever, because it's just like, it's, yeah. it just took a long time for it to ever for everybody to get ssds that it just didn't matter so but that's what i'm saying if if the console spec is now ssd based that to me is what pushes us what forward. about my xbox one x version uh or whatever one. You, yeah you're you'll i mean that's you'll get cross-gen for two or three years but i don't think you're well, gonna get that and, and consoles you could put ssds in consoles i mean uh, you know that that's already a thing yeah. but they don't take advantage of it necessarily yeah, like one, yeah. once developers start programming their games with the the assumption that they have an SSD to run off of, I think that you stop seeing 7,200 RPM hard drives become, uh, I, or I be guess. viable. Oh my God. You know, it's going to be awesome because the consoles have eight cores now. 
Yeah, all we'll the see. games on PC will hopefully. Use yeah, eight and cores. Then, hopefully. I, well, and that and that won't happen. What the hell did that no, ever happen? That won't happen. But like we have seen. Well, I would we say did, we did see when the consoles moved to quad core parts. Quad core also became the standard on PC. They don't take advantage of those cores, but they have moved to quad core as the standard. I mean, I uh, just kind of the, for me, it's more about like RAM and stuff. When you see more RAM put into those consoles the RAM uh, requirements have gone up on the PC as well. I guess, but it is sort of, I, f I feel it's mostly, it solves itself on the PC before it ever, like these consoles won't even come out till 2020. Yeah. I mean, holy smokes, who doesn't have an SSD now? I mean, uh, I mean but as I, SSDs but as are I like said, 80 bucks. No, totally, but as I said, like a lot of people are still running 7200 yeah. RPM hard drives because these games are 100 gigs each. Well, yeah. and, and, and so, yeah, exactly. So, so I people have, in like, the chat are saying that same thing. Like Vignesh, he's like, hey, you, sometimes you just can't afford it. Yeah, you know? like I, I have, I have, let me, like I have 12 terabytes of storage in my PC because I review all of our games. Yes. And I have filled up probably nine terabytes of storage over the years with just like, ah, this game, I'll just leave it installed. Yeah. Um, I think that we're going to hit a point where like you need an SSD and yeah, a lot of people are going to have, you know, 500 or one, one terabyte SSDs because that's the best that they can have. And it's going to be a lot of drive Tetris again. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ah, well, I got to move this stuff around to make room. I've, I have one in my home system. I have one M.2 and then two uh ssds yeah. uh and so and they're all half a half a terabyte yeah. you know it's like so I, I don't have one big one that, that i use yeah uh, and i mean i definitely when i switched over to that i definitely saw an increase in load times for damn sure but i mean not the kind of stuff they're talking about on the new consoles that's why i'm saying they're kind of leapfrogging yeah if, if, as i said like to me it comes down to if they start programming with the assumption like hey we have an ssd so now we can count on you yeah. know, this amount of data coming through in this amount of time, uh, that that hard drive might, and, and as I said, it's already started. Like, there are definitely open world games that struggle on a hard drive right now to get all of the assets streamed in on time. And Yeah, it would um, be nice if everybody had SSDs. I guess. Yeah, and, and that's, how, that's where I think we're going. Uh, like, I think all of the hard drives I have will be fine for the stuff that I already have installed there, but I don't think they're going to be long-term viable. Well, here, here's a good question from uh, Dad Isn't Mad. Uh, will consoles move on to or to something like the Max Fusion drive, or do you think it's purely SSD? To, I mean, obviously, we don't know details. We don't but. know, but it sounds very much... I mean, they're also targeting... <laughs> it's all, The end of 2020 is forever away, so yeah. I, I'm guessing they're targeting... Uh, since they're both Ryzen base AMD, it, they're going to be PCIe four, you know, most likely, right? Uh, so there'll be specialized SSD controllers, PCIe four, and in twenty twenty, I could see them actually coming with one terabyte SSDs, yeah, rather than you know than uh, magnetic. Yeah, and I, well, and I could see, uh, I could see different SKUs like that. They've already talked about um, Microsoft's code names have leaked. Uh, so who knows how real this is, but Scarlet ended up being the actual code name for the project. So I would mm -hmm. assume, and I want to say it was like project Anaconda was their high end kit. And then they had, oh man, I'm going to space on the other name, but they had like a lower end box that they're planning as well. Um, because they're doing X cloud and all that. Yeah. Um, and so we'll see what both those boxes end up shipping as also. Maybe one of them is just a, a hard drive that you're streaming off of cause you're only putting saves on there or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, well, and also I, I still have a feeling that, that maybe like the X or they might stay around in some form cause yeah. you can play old games, but you can also do the X cloud stuff on it. So yep. I, I could see that being a third price entry. Uh, but, um, Dad isn't mad. Also asked earlier, uh, what, do we want to try to take stab at price points with what we know uh, right now? Uh, especially uh, since Gordon's really good at guessing prices lately. I'm going to say 500 for the top end on both of them. The highest end, 500. Yeah, I think that 600, which I think the original Xbox One had a $500 skew. Mm -hmm. The PS3 had the $600. But and didn't, didn't like Xbox the, One X come out at 600? No, 500. Oh, five. Okay. Uh, I feel like 500 they've found is the most they can ask. <laughs> uh, I feel like when the PS3 came out at 600, there was a ton of uproar. Oh, of course. Um, and it's like, I mean, it's a, it's a decade and a half later. So like 600 in, in 2007 dollars or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I think the 500 ends up being like a fair 
price for the highest for, end one. for the highest end version and what, what uh, about would, if there is a second lower end i version? assume that's a 300 dollar 350 oh. uh the normal like so hey, the pre- or, hey here's yeah. your here's your cheap i mean because they're talking about that as like a streaming only True, sort yeah. of box uh presumably with no disk drive or anything like that um we don't know because we haven't seen anything oh, I mean, about that yeah. we've barely seen x cloud actually um, yeah well, but, what, what do you think gordon um you know it's this hardware i mean they are going to buy Ryzen, volume navi they're going to get a volume ssds but, is, and it's really far away and they it take is, a loss on the first couple of years anyway it's 18 months away which is forever away but i would think honestly they're going to try to push the elasticity of the market is what uh how people like to explain <laughs> it which is they're going to charge more i say they push 600 dollars. okay both of them will push if they both agree to push 600 dollars then what yeah, do you I mean, I think about? that's the question is they usually don't, they usually, they usually like don't. to undercut each other. But I mean, the insane part is I don't, how in the world, who is going to buy the iPhone 10 R XR if they just announced the iPhone 11 that yeah. won't come out for a year? I really think, I know Adam thinks it does hurt actually, sales. I, th- I thought, uh, oh, I, no, think I, it does. I, I, I thought it about sales. you, I thought it, well, of course it's going to hurt sales, but it's like, there's uh, I w- I follow some some people on Instagram that that I don't personally know, but somebody just got a, had a video unboxing a new Xbox, and you're like, oh, I got one, thank sure, you, thank you. Sure. you know what I mean, it's like, dude, people are always buying I this mean, stuff, so and I, there's not educated people of like what's coming next, and some people don't care about what's coming I, next; they I just think, want something that's here now. I think the difference this time is, as I said earlier in the show, uh, we know that both of these are backwards compat. Um, at least to the last generation. So PS5 has said they're backwards compatible to PS4. Mm-hmm. Xbox has gone even further. They've said they're backwards compatible uh, to the original Xbox. Uh, and who knows what that means? Uh, I would assume that it means all of the games that are currently backwards compatible on Xbox One will be backwards compatible on the next Xbox. They're not going to just like fix the rest of the library. Um but the but ones also, they have. Yeah. yeah, the ones they had. And they've also said all of the hardware is backwards compatible. So if you have a original Xbox controller sitting around and yeah. you get a USB adapter for it, you can run it on the next Xbox, uh, which is wild as well. They, yeah. I, so they, had to, they had to say it because the, they announced that Elite 2 controller, oh, which yeah. I'm really looking forward to. Very excited. Uh, I still think it's crazy. Well, but uh, I mean, come on. If if we think of this as just another PC, another bump in the, the, the cycle, yeah, you know, like, like you, are, are they going to stop selling a graphics card? Because, you know, there will be a new one a year and a half from now. Uh, if they actually announce and talk about specs, hell yeah, you know it's going to depress sales. No, dude, come there on, we, no we, we, dude. Industry. How many times did we argue in this in this very podcast of people saying, "Oh, the 2080 just came out. I'm just going to go buy a 1080." That doesn't Ti. matter. I'm talking about intentionally people still buy old stuff, your sales. There's a reason nobody talks about the 2025 well, Fords in 2019. And I, I don't. I, so there's a couple of things here. Nobody does that. I, I agree that it will depress sales to some extent, but. I I don't, also don't think Microsoft has much to lose because Microsoft has already lost this console generation. Yeah, and that's so hard. why I think this is sort of like this. Well, but PS5 has done it as well. So. Uh, but well, P- they've been forced to though. Well, yeah. like the Google, hey, the Google Pixel these. Four literally just got announced, and that's still four months in the making. And so, I, and people I feel are like, doing this. I feel like Google kind of forced people's hands to some extent. Yeah. Like they wanted to get out there with their streaming stuff, which then forced PS, um, forced Sony to come out with their PS5 stuff yeah. because they knew Microsoft was going to do this this year. Uh, I think there's been a lot of chain reactions going on of oh, people yeah. being like, yeah. oh, crap, we have to get this out. Yeah. Um, well, and also, guess what? All this stuff gets leaked anyway. Yeah. It, so, it, uh, like, whether it they... gets leaked. Gordon, no whether they come whether out... It's real, but yeah, there's but, a difference between getting on a stage and talking about, look, at, check out the brand new thing coming out I don't 18 think so. months from now. I don't think so. Uh, I, I, I think leaks are going to happen no matter what. I mean, I, that's why Google came out with the, the Pixel stuff. They're like, well, all right, it's leaked, so we might as well come well, out and say... And Adam, so. no one buys again, like, Pixels. I, I got one. Nobody buys this. <laughs> it's like, you know what? Like, I know. I know. Nothing. And again, I think that, like, a lot of it ends up being... Uh, forced hands by competitors. Yeah, so course. like I've I I heard rumors at the show, for instance, that Google threw together that Stadia thing in like the last second. Oh, I'm sure because they thought Microsoft was going to hit heavy with X Cloud at E3, and so Google was like, "Oh, we need to have our own event." So they held this event that like basically said nothing again. Uh, filmed that that uh, sizzle reel of releases. Um. 
didn't really, I don't think, make a huge impact on anybody. And then Microsoft just didn't talk about xCloud at E3. Barely. Like that, yeah. They barely mentioned it. Uh, and so, like, you, that's like Shadow War stuff, right? Like, Microsoft, it, Google makes an <laughs> assumption based off what they think Microsoft is going to do. Google reacts to that, and then Microsoft just doesn't follow through on that assumption. Yeah. Um, right. And so I think we've seen a lot of that this year. I think everybody's gearing up for next gen. And so we've seen, as I said, Google announced their thing. So then Sony feels like they have to get out in front of Microsoft at E3 because they know Microsoft's going to do it. And then because of that, we'll see Sony react in a couple months and we'll just play the game for a year and a half. Uh, I think, as I said, Microsoft has the least to lose because they... But, al- but also, they've lost, lost a specs war. To, Gordon, I'm sorry. Despite all this, they will continue to sell consoles. I sure. promise. They, they won't sell, sell as consoles. many consoles as they would have I mean, if but nobody I don't knew think about Microsoft. I, I don't think Microsoft cares as much. Uh, and that's the weird thing about Microsoft at this point is i don't really know what their tactic is because well, like they i also, mean they're really they, switching to software because i yeah. mean they, they've beefed up their their lineup of games that they yep. actually develop and, and publish and also the xcloud stuff if that runs everywhere then yeah. how much do they care where it's yeah at, well you whether know? you have a box and that's yeah. the thing is they they already allow me to run all of their xbox games on pc and so like i can tell you right now sitting here on uh you know june whatever it is 19th 2019 something uh, I'm not buying a next gen Xbox. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably end up reviewing it if one yeah. comes through here, but I'm not buying one because I have a PC that will run. I already know yeah. it's going to run all of their games. Uh, and so if you're watching at home, you know, PC world faithful, I assume you have a PC. I assume most of you are not buying an Xbox either. Yeah. Uh, and Microsoft seems totally okay with that, which is different than, which is awesome. Microsoft five or 10 years ago. Um, Microsoft used to be a very console focused uh, place and I think that they still would love for you to buy a console and play on your couch and they would love for that console to be an Xbox but like they're not locking those games to that platform anymore and so there's not much reason for me to stay well, in that ecosystem and, and also all, all the messaging that they've had Phil Spencer has been out there and uh, you know I don't know him I've actually never met him but he seems like a genuine dude for the most part uh, and you know the, he's he's very much coming out saying hey listen you want to spend two thousand dollars on your PC? Awesome, go for it. Oh, hey, you only have four hundred to spend in a console? Cool, awesome, go for it. Hey, you can only really run stuff in the web browser? Cool, you know, a, a five dollar, ten dollar, whatever it is, going to be a, a month. You know, we we've got so many different ways to get into it that they don't care. They just want the more options for more people to get into it. As yeah. long as you stay in their system, as as long. Well, but that's the subscription thing, right? You know. Yeah, and yeah. we'll and we'll see. Like, I don't know how it'll end up playing out, but I think that. Microsoft is much less concerned with selling Scarlet to people than they were the last time around yeah. uh, with the Xbox One. They have diversified what their company is doing, yeah. uh, or at least what the gaming portion of their company is doing, uh, to an extent that I think uh, is sort of admirable looking from the PC side, uh, and has definitely made me... It has put Microsoft in my good graces, even if I don't uh, think many of their games these past few years have been good, <laughs> and I don't know what scarlet will look like uh it has at least made me have some goodwill towards microsoft that i definitely didn't have at the beginning of this generation when don matrix out there being like ah if you don't have if you're on a nuclear sub we have a console for you it's called the xbox 360 uh stuff like that that like really bad messaging that microsoft had at the beginning of the last console generation uh it's nice to see them move past that uh, yeah, I guess, but I, I yeah, they should have, I still think they should have stuck with their guns because the connect was cool. Yeah. And they, they charge higher price. They have a feature. They force everybody to have it. That means that every single console has it. Developers go, everybody's got connect. I'm going to add connect features. Then it turned into, well, maybe I'll have these features and maybe not. Maybe. Sure. I just don't think connect was the, the hill you die on. Yeah. Uh, like I, I, that's the thing. I think that this, this time around. Uh, the SSD stuff uh, seems like a much better, more applicable thing for people to get behind. Like, oh, cool, no low times. It's a thing that everybody understands. I guess, but I also think, like, at the same time, who who is not going to play a game connected to the internet now? 
Who wants to play no, a game totally. without internet access? Totally. So uh, were they, I mean... Well, I, I, but no, actually, we do have a lot of sure. listeners that are overseas that can't get a stable connection. Or I mean, there's, there's un- plenty of people. It is unfortunate. It who, is unfortunate. Yeah. Well, and, I, and I think Microsoft was sort of just ahead of their time on a lot of that stuff yeah. anyway. Like, and I, the messaging I, was I think, bad. I think if they announced a console that was, you know, online only at this point, it would still be problematic. Well, it's be xCloud. Cloud. Yeah, <laughs> there, it would be problematic and there would be an uproar, but I think there would be much less of an uproar than there was circa oh, 2013. Like we, I, I can say now, like PC is almost always online at this point. Uh, Steam is, Steam has an offline mode, but it barely works. Yeah. Uh, and games as a service has become such a thing that like most of the games that you're going to run require a connection at this point anyway. Uh and so, yeah, like I think that nowadays the idea of, oh, this console doesn't work without, like, uh, here's the thing. I think that publishers basically backdoored the always online thing by just making it so every single game yep. was an online game. Uh, so even the for, games for that you DRM play, purposes, yeah, even yeah. the games that you play as a first per, or as a as single, a single player. player game are all online games at this point. They yeah, all have yeah. some component that you lose because you're not online. Right. I I just I I just when I look back to all the all the anger, all the shouting at Microsoft for connect increasing prices and online only. Yeah. I mean, hell, they were right. Right. I mean, connect. Uh. I mean, it could have been if it had continued. In a sure. way, that, it just, I mean, it was I, a cool feature, right? I mean, yeah, it was fine. I just don't think Connect was the. I think same thing. Connect was ahead of its time. Like it basically just turned into uh, Alexa and Google Home. Um, that was Connect, basically. Well, far more powerful though, because uh, uh, yeah. Connect was. Well, yeah, I mean, definitely some I mean, of the features. Yeah, you in had Connect more were. more sensors on on Connect. Yeah, I mean, it's still such but, a like, small the, base. The stuff that yeah. people ended up using Connect for was just Xbox on. And like very basic voice, yeah, which stuff. is unfortunate because yeah. um, I don't know. Like I, I will not go to bat for Connect yeah. uh, in a way in the same way you are. Like I think it was a fine piece of hardware that nobody ever really did anything cool with. Uh, and yeah, I, and the reason why they never did anything cool is because not a hundred percent of the consoles. Had I mean, it. but for the first year, well, a hundred percent of the consoles had it, and, and also small, cool with it. and also a hundred percent of one console. <laughs> Yeah, you know, let alone like you, you, yeah, like you couldn't yeah. make a PS4 game that had Connect functionality in a meaningful way. Yeah, imagine Ubisoft being like, "All right, well, you know, we're gonna make games for all these platforms. Oh, well, we've got a Connect thing over here. Eh, let's yeah, not worry it, about it's it." It's sort know? of the same problem VR has yeah. now of just like uh, you're either making a game for VR or you're not, and there's not really a way to convert between the two. Uh, you can, but it usually ends up bad. Um, so yeah, I don't let me, know. Let me ask you this though. So I I've been saying, and I said this, you know, I'm not going to name the person because you know don't don't want her ears burning, but <laughs> I think it's kind of boring. I'm just I think it's kind of boring, honestly. These next gen consoles. I mean, I I think it's awesome what AMD is doing with Ryzen and, and Radeon and awesomeness, but like PS5 and whatever it is, the Xbox is like, uh, yeah. So let me, I'll tell you what's going to be in there. It's going to have Radeon. I mean, sure. It's going to have like, Ryzen. Sure, but you still. Oh, boy, that's, you know. Sure, what, were you, you, you were excited before the Xbox One that no, it I'm, had Jaguar cores? I'm just, I'm just surprised by how incredibly boring it is. I mean, but they've, be, they've become you know? phone or PC releases. Like, I, I don't get excited when the next gen of laptops comes out either. But, oh, like, people still make new yeah, laptops. I, 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 I would counter. I would counter and say that generation means less now this time. Like next gen totally means way less way now. Less you know, than for, it's PS2 like Intel to moving from eighth gen to ninth gen. Yeah, but I mean look, there's diversity in PC platform. Yeah. You could buy an HP, you can buy a Dell, one could be AMD, one could be Intel, one could be Nvidia, one could be Radeon. Sure. Right? There's all different things. But like these consoles are like the, the only difference is the operating system, it seems like. Well, I mean, they and, may do a little games. bit of tuning underneath. But, games, like that, yeah. but that's why I said when we started this, like, yeah, they're the same box. Yeah. I am just so like, like it's so boring. But like the service side of it is much different. Yeah. Uh, oh, like yeah. Microsoft has leaned heavily into services. Sony's thing is like, hey, we've got this great stable of first gen ga- or first party games. Uh so you'll probably get another God of War. Uh you'll get what are your last of us whatever naughty dog ends up making yeah uh ghost of tsushima whatever that ends up being yeah uh, like that, there's that's, exclusive stuff that's their thing is the prestige game side of it um but yeah like i agree i don't think it's as cool as you know ps2 to ps3 uh xbox original xbox to 360 like i remember seeing the screenshots of assassin's creed 
uh, and being like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Uh, because, like, they had those crowds and you could go anywhere. You had all this open world stuff. Uh, and, yeah, I don't think that this is nearly as interesting. Um, but, like, I think a lot of that is, A, we're on the PC side of things. And we've seen a lot of this stuff. Like incrementally. If you, oh, if SSD you, is exciting. Well, no, Welcome but, like, to SSDs. but if you go from an Xbox One, like the original 2013 model Xbox One, to Scarlet, whatever Scarlet ends up being, that's going to be a huge jump. Yeah, that's like <laughs> that's an amazing. Like, imagine running on a like. Okay, what was I running in 2012? I was running a 7850. I was running a, a Sapphire 7850. Is the Xbox One really from 2012? 2013, yeah. And it was equivalent to, I think, the 7850. So imagine yeah. going from a 7850 last year to, like, a 2070 next year or whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. like, imagine, like, oh, my God. Like, this is amazing, everything. And then add an SSD. Like, imagine you went from having a 5400 RPM hard drive to all of a sudden you have an M.2. And you're like, wow, this is amazing. Everything runs so fast. It looks beautiful. Isn't it already too late, though, Hayden? Because a lot of those people have left the platform for PC. I, I I'm think making that, that up. I mean, the, the I wouldn't PC, say a lot, but there's definitely yeah, some. Yeah, the PC has yeah. definitely grown the same way it has at the end of every console gen uh, for the people who really care about this stuff. But, like, there's definitely plenty of people who are just like, I play Call of Duty every year. I play it on my original Xbox One that I bought in 2013. I play Madden every year. Yeah. And, like, those people are the people that are going to buy a new console and they're going to be like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Look at how far we've come in seven years. Uh, I think that we're just spoiled because we get graphics cards in, we like see how everything is progressing year over year. And so, yeah, when you have like a yearly incremental upgrade and then you have another one of those, uh, I don't think that's very exciting for us. Um, to me, that's why again, like, and not to harp on this, I think the SSD stuff is interesting because of the way it could pan out and affect the PC Yeah, because the rest of it, like whatever, I don't think any of the stuff that's, you know, if this is a 2060 equivalent or whatever, I don't know what it'll end up being, but, 2060 equivalent console like yeah that's not gonna impress me i would i have a 1080 ti at home it's a beautiful card everything looks great uh but yeah if you end up oh cool nothing has load times anymore and i'm playing on pc and like suddenly nothing has load times on an ssd not even like the you know two second load times we have now just like there's no load times ever yeah uh that stuff ends up being really cool like uh <laughs> SSDs we recognize have been on PCs for years now. Totally, even large SSDs. Most I would I would I would gather to say you know ninety nine percent of totally. higher end PC game machines have been running SSDs. Probably a hundred percent. But like the console scale is so much bigger than mm. the scale of those SSDs on PC. This is like the same thing. I mean, and I'm not I'm gonna I run Android right, mm -hmm. and everybody I think in this room runs Android. Yep, of course. Any other uh, option? <laughs> but Apple, when they come out and say, hey, we're supporting a thing on the iPhone. Oh. Like taking away and the fingerprint like, and sensor. Every, or, and everybody <laughs> on Android is like... Taking away the headphone check. It, or adding stuff usually. Like if, if when Apple is like, hey, we're adding wireless charging. And well, Android people are like, we've had this yeah. for five years. But then as soon as Apple says we're doing a thing, suddenly there's a million peripherals out there that support it. There's a million, you know services on the app store that support it and so that's the thing is i i agree we've had ssds on the pc for so many years i've been running an ssd as my main os drive since like 2013 or something uh but there's never been there are not a lot of games that are like built for an SSD on the PC spec. Hmm. Like that is not the that is not the spec that most developers are doing. Interesting. At. I wonder if that's because developers are like, well, we don't need to put time into making sure this all streams correctly on the PC because we're worried about our console version. Yeah. They, I mean, those are all on hard drives. Yeah, they're slow on hard as hell. Drives. And that's what I mean. Well, well, so and, now and still a lot of people thing, on the PC still are so on hard drives. So too. that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I'm not saying that sure. it's gonna be I'm not saying that the fact that consoles have SSDs is like a life-changing thing because, oh, wow, this amazing tech that the consoles just discovered. It's more a uh, a net boon for the PC crowd because... The last thing in class has finally gotten across yeah, the finish line, totally. so now we can move on. Totally. Is that what the... Uh -huh. and, that, and that's what that's I mean. That's a little different than, you know, oh, my God, this is going to be awesome because now... <laughs> No, these aren't consoles. It's like the but it very is, but last that, but one that, but that is holding the, the entire group back 
is a cross. Now we can move on. Folks. Sure, but that but that is the reason. Like the fact that the consoles have SSDs is the reason that we can then move those goalposts forward again. How uh, about maybe the last one at the back of the line, and you know. It's okay to be last, but maybe try to be not last all the time. Sure, you know? but like that's a, it's just a, I mean, that's a side effect of how the console release cycle works. If they're Being only going to release every seven years, like sure, they're going to be last. Yeah. Uh, there, it's, it's if the Xbox One base spec is a $500 PC by 2012 standards. So, like, yeah, it's, it's uh, taking them a while to get I, to the next also, one. Also, uh, uh, Timothy uh, in our YouTube chat says, uh, as a programmer, the way you program against an eight, uh, hard drive versus an NVMe SSD is rather huge. No seek times. Ten, ti- ten times the bandwidth can change the entire way a game is loaded. Yeah, and that's that's what I mean. I, I agree. The fact that consoles have SSDs is like a wow, finally factor. But the way that it affects the PC is actually fairly major insofar as now our min spec is, oh, they have SSDs and we can finally program for that. Uh, And so I think it'll actually, that's like the thing that will be cool to me is seeing that get pushed forward in a way that like when the consoles say, ah, we have ray tracing, like I could care less about whatever the graphics capabilities of the next Xbox are because I know that my PC is still going to be better than those consoles. Um, yeah, but the SSD stuff, all that, like, oh, cool, we're actually going to see people take advantage of this hardware I've had. Yeah, in a way that's not just, oh, the load times that you already had will be shorter because that's what it's been for the last like ten years now. You know, I was playing Vampire, which is a fifteen-year-old game, and every time you go through a door in that game, you still have a load screen. And it's like, yeah. yeah, the load screen moves a lot faster than it did in 2004, but like it's still <laughs> there. And like yeah. the fact oh, that we yeah. have a load screen at all is like, oh, what the hell are you doing? Like this should not be here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, and 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 the thing is, it's, it's just, drive access is not the only thing holding it back. Right? Totally, it's, it's your decompressing textures, your all the assets and all that stuff you have totally. to deal with. Loading into RAM, but they never worry about really sort of efficiently managing that for a faster of storage device. I, but I yeah, know. that's because I, again, it's like the scale thing, uh, and the PCs have a double problem. It's not a scale thing, the, Hayden. The PCs have is a, the last one. Okay, this is a high. Right. I mean, where the, is console? Console's back uh, there, sir. It's only got fifty four hundred RPM hard drive. Uh, well, Gordon, uh, I don't know about you. That's a big difference. <laughs> I, I'm excited for it, but moving on. Are you? I, I'm excited, are you excited to move on. Are you excited? We're sitting on the side of the road here, waiting for the console to get across the line with the SSD. You're here finally. We can go now. Well, I well if talking about something in the future, like we're we're looking <laughs> towards future tech things that aren't really available, you know, widely right now. We're talking about exciting things like game streaming. Oh, yes. Right? He wants streaming Adam from wants to the move cloud. Now that yeah. I pointed out last person crossing the finish line, now we can now we can shut it down. Well, hey, you know, uh, uh, NVIDIA has been here with GeForce Now. Yeah, this is streaming not new thing. either. This isn't new. You know, it's been available on... Actually, Sony ha- has a streaming thing for yep. a couple of years. I've written you know? about it. Uh, yeah. I, so, I played God Do you think this is even worth, worth this Dude, effort? This, this is, is going to be... You, you want exciting future tech? Imagine a multiplayer game that uh, is running on a server and isn't just capped by a hundred people it's a thousand yes people, yes right yes, imagine that opening times. that up yeah it sounds yeah. kind of interesting uh, i wonder kind of interesting ever, do you think it'll actually happen adam oh, i don't know uh, the, this, but it's exciting future tech gordon you're always excited about future tech right this is you know this is something that, that that wasn't possible like why would somebody hold back this ray tracing technology you know like just for hundred eight hundred dollars you know like you should be investing in the future this is the future Gordon. so you're saying game streaming, streaming is the PC. future game streaming is the future is is here let me ask you too is game streaming going to kill well, and the thing is not. is it going to go is it going to kill console is it going to kill pc which is standalone gaming clients uh, i think it would kill console before pc because console is aimed at a uh, affordable crowd and the PC is not. Um, I think the the <laughs> I think the main problem with the the streaming stuff so far is the pricing model just doesn't make any sense to me. No, it doesn't sound good. To so me. W- so when Google was like when we so we saw them at GDC right when they announced all this stuff and when they said first like it, they started to have rumors float around about subscription services, a uh, ten dollar a month subscription service which they have. Uh, it's called Stadia Pro or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that, that made sense because Google has a history of shutting down services. No, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. And 
when you're paying like 10 bucks a month, if they decide to shut this down in two years, right, you're not out anything like you. Yeah. You lose <laughs> the, the $10 a month that you paid for that subscription, but like the scri- subscription goes away. Okay. Like I lost my subscription. It was the same when on live shut down. I lost my on live account. It was fine. Uh, but then they started talking about last week during or before E3, uh, the the pro service will get you like a certain amount of games for the subscription, but then you'll also be able to buy games through Stadia, and presumably those games are locked into their ecosystem, like they're not giving you Steam keys or Epic's keys or whatever to to go along with this. So they're just locked in Google's ecosystem. So you can buy, you know, pay $60 for Assassin's Creed running on Stadia, play Assassin's Creed streaming. And then if Google just decides to shut down Stadia in two years, whatever you, whatever you bought is just gone at yeah. that point. Like they don't have an exit strategy for me to like get my Assassin's Creed purchase out of there. Uh, you can't download it because that's not what their service is about. So you're not going to be able to like, you know, hey, we're shutting down Stadia. And uh, you can download all your games before we shut down, but then we're gone. Like, no, you can't do that because they're not a download service. Mm-hmm. And that was where I kind of stopped being interested in Stadia, uh, I think. When they sold you the full version. Which, yeah, which when they started sucks. talking about buying games, that's where I started to get very like, oh, I'm not sure about you this. You don't want to buy into well, that. Yeah. Which why I think uh, GeForce Now is better because you're at least buying still through the services the 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 steams the epic games yeah. the bethesda's you know so it's still yours whether you play it normally well, or through geforce now and that's what i'm like i'm curious about microsoft and xcloud which they, again they barely talked about at the show uh, i played some xcloud stuff actually i played gears of war on a phone uh it ran about uh what you would expect for a streaming service over a 4g network which is to say not great um there was at least like a half second of lag, I want to say, um, which yeah. I found latency is also untenable. Kind of uh, maybe with five G that gets you know improved uh, if five G ever ro- rolls out, but I found it untenable. I would not want to play games that way, or at least I would not want to play a shooter that way. Um, well, uh, Doom Eternal was uh, well, was, that's, if, you know. So like again, they weren't plugged in at the because we were playing off phones. So like maybe Stadia and like maybe X Cloud on a PC when you have uh, an Ethernet cable plugged in and a gigabit connection like maybe that's better. But like at least on a phone it felt bad. Uh, but yeah, I'm at least more interested in what Microsoft has to say because presumably those will be games that you are buying through Microsoft. And so like oh if I have you know if I bought the console the Xbox version of I don't know Gears of War six or Halo Infinite or whatever. Uh, presumably I get the X cloud version of that, um, maybe with an added subscription fee, but like presumably you get that included. Um, and so then you have a disc version of that game for if Microsoft says, Oh, X cloud is not working out. We're going to shut this down. Uh, Google, I just, they don't have a, a backup. Like when, once that sh- shuts down, you have nothing. You've lost yeah, your entire We're assuming it, it'll shut down, but there is that risk. There totally. Is that risk. Uh, well, and that's the thing. Like Google has not done enough to dissuade me from that risk do you know what i mean uh, no i agree and you know like microsoft i know will be around for a while in the probably. game space <laughs> also because they're, they're not, selling you a key to the game that you can probably play on your pc or your yeah, console like, uh, you know, or stream microsoft is not shutting down their <laughs> xbox department in the next three years i don't think and then if they did they would at least be able to say hey you have halo infinite still for yeah. pc you can just download it and play it that way. Like we're, we're getting rid of the windows 10 store or whatever. Like they're not doing this, but suppose they said, well, they're stepping away from EWP. So yeah, suppose they said we're shutting down all of it. They would at least say, Hey, you can download all of your purchases before we shut down. Google has no like out. Like if Google yeah, decides no, to shut down stadia, there's nothing for you to do. Your purchases are presumably just gone because you have no way of running them. You can't download them. You can't like have your own server. You're going to spin up. Would you say that Google is is disadvantaged against Microsoft and Sony and, and Nintendo because they don't have uh, exclusives, right? Each Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, they have exclusive titles that bind you to their service. Google doesn't. Oh, well, well, but Google's no, Stadia trying. Stadia is working. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Google's trying. So they've Google's built out a first party studio or actually a couple of studios internally. Yeah. 
Uh, That's a they lot had, of money. It was like it was Jade, Jade Raymond yeah, was yeah. on stage mm-hmm. at GDC. Uh, so she was out there saying we're putting games out. Who knows whether anything actually happens because Amazon said they were putting out games six years ago and they still have yet to release <laughs> a game and yeah. actually just laid off like I think 80 people last week or yeah, something. I saw that. But how do you get to like, I mean, because there are really like, hey, I get it. Halo, Xbox thing. Yeah. PlayStation has its thing. Everybody has their thing. It's really hard to make this one thing that everybody wants to run to your platform. Totally, but they end up. I mean, they'll end up doing it. I assume the same way that Epic has done it, just with the Epic Game Store, which isn't even. You know, they didn't even build a new platform. It's just a PC storefront, but they have paid. You know, oh hey, we want six months exclusivity on your game. We want a year exclusivity on your game. Uh, And we don't really know how those contracts are structured. Uh, it seems like maybe they're just, you can't release on steam contracts because like Metro Exodus is a Epic game store exclusive, uh, except during E3, they announced they're going to be on windows store, uh, whenever game pass for PC launches. Oh, really? mm-hmm. Uh, and so presumably Epic allowed them to do that, uh, which makes it seem like it's just anti steam at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. but yeah, like presumably Google, if they feel like they need games, can afford to buy games uh that i mean they already had reveals like that was the Baldur's gate three reveal was at stadia uh and i can't remember there was something else is it exclusive oh the destiny stuff the destiny Mm. uh, oh yeah yeah no they're they're not exclusive but they they've already they're forming those connections that you could see them going out and being like hey we want six months of exclusivity on this um like ubisoft showed up in a big way at the stadia presentation i bet there's a google exclusive ubisoft game in the next year or two or at least a skin or something yeah <laughs> uh i think that google can afford it for sure like if, if epic can yeah. afford it and google can definitely afford it um it's more a question of whether anybody will actually be swayed by it um, yeah. like well, the epic game store i don't mind that exclusivity because again it functions like steam uh i mean with some major caveats uh but in general it's a platform that i understand it's i go and i download my games and i play them uh stadia i just feel very skeptical about the entire idea of it um just the the idea of having these games locked to a service that google controls and then not really understanding how google will let me out of that ecosystem if that time comes i wonder if it makes sense from a money point of view because one of you know GeForce Experience, GeForce Now, I can't remember what they call it. It's actually a pretty cool service. It works, you know, decently well. It's been out for a couple of years, yeah. if not three. But they've never, ever sort of released it with a price because it's like... Well, they did. And then everyone pushed back and was like, oh, whoa, this yeah, price. But, and they're like, never mind. Because, I mean, it's not like you have one server managing email for, you know, 800,000 people. It's like a rack of servers consuming... a ton of power yeah. just so like 10 people can play a game I, i'm not sure like if you actually paid for stadia and you played your games for 80 hours they've lost probably ten dollars just in electricity just in running that i don't understand how it makes financial sense. yeah i don't I, well and i don't know and i don't know like yeah. again we brought this up earlier i don't know why it makes sense for devs uh like if, it, if this is tied to subscription service type stuff like i don't think that, that makes much sense for developers uh because they're getting paid less than they would otherwise um there's a lot of stuff that i'm skeptical of uh which sucks because like i think the underlying tech is very internet like i was an on live subscriber i played the original witcher on a macbook Mm -hmm. back in it wasn't great in college um and yeah it was not a great experience but it was good for certain types of games like you could play civ or whatever on on live with the high, and, and not you know, have a problem because the latency didn't matter very yeah. much. And it was also very early technology, so I mean the the, the, the compression that was yep. going, it was it was just it was not great. In, way way. But worse if it was your PC. only option, yeah. uh, like it worked fine. Uh, it was not your best option for sure. But there were certain games that were PC exclusives, and I didn't have a PC in college uh, that were like, oh, I'm gonna play this on my MacBook through the power of the internet, and it worked great. Um, but like I so like I see the tech being really cool and I think the ten dollar a month thing for Stadia seems interesting. And then they've also talked about like you can play certain games for free on Stadia. Uh that sounds really cool too, as like a demo. Uh I'm just skeptical as soon as they say, Hey, you're gonna pay full price for games on this thing, 
uh, that to me seems like a real, like a trap. Like that's a, Oh no, I'm never going to do that. Yeah. Uh, I'll give them the $10 a month subscription. Cause yeah, whatever, 10 bucks a month. I pay that for eight subscriptions or whatever already. So who cares? It just seems like it, it's, it's, it's a very uphill battle at this point, especially where we are, especially on PC because high, high refresh rate, extremely low latency that we yeah. have with gaming PCs. Today. Totally. Consoles are actually getting there too. So, but it's a, it's the same thing. Like, well, advantage? no, but it's the same thing. Like, I think that we are spoiled because we all have nice gaming PCs. We have consoles, all that. Uh, I think this is very much more geared towards people who like, ah, I would check out this game, but I don't have a thing to play it on. And then being able to be like, oh, well, you can just play it on your phone. Like all you need is a controller or, oh, you can play it on your TV because all my TVs come with Chromecast built in at this point. Um, Stuff like that that like puts it right out in front of like my parents. My parents are not going to buy a console. Yeah, when they play Fortnite, what do they play? <laughs> yeah, no, they're they're not going to buy a console. Uh, play Fortnite on their phone. But like, my mom has always been very interested in games. It's just not a thing that she wants to put out down four hundred dollars up front to like get into. Do you know what I mean? And some mm-hmm. parents might be badasses. Uh, and let's, so let's for be fair. Yeah, totally. True. No, but I'm I'm talking specific, Ti, specifically SOI. about my parents. They are not going to buy a console, and but like they might be able. If I was like, mom, why don't you put ten bucks in and you can just play? Like, let's just give it a shot. And could like, it be complimentary to the PC? Totally. Because, sure. I mean, well, uh, you, you play a game on Stadia, you're like, wow, this is kind of cool. I wish I had a better experience. Oh, well, just yeah. get this well, I, but I $700 think that, gaming PC. And- I think the main problem, again, is, like, uh, for me, like, Google's ecosystem being its own ecosystem, which is why I'm more interested in Microsoft, because with Microsoft, presumably how this will work. And, again, we don't know details on xCloud. Presumably, though, you'll be able to, like, play on PC. I could play Halo Infinite on PC, right, next year. And then, oh, I want to, like, go play in my living room. I've got my Xbox there. I'll play it on the Xbox for a bit. And then it's like, ah, I'm, like, I'm going to be out and about for the rest of the day. What if I could just play my same Halo Infinite save, my same character, all that stuff on my phone and just take that with me? Uh, and that, to me, is, like, the real promise of this stuff is, like, those circumstances where you don't have your main so like for me i think that this could kill for instance gaming laptops um not kill but put a dent in gaming laptops because like if i don't Mm. need to especially like high-end gaming laptops um like i right now i'm running a 1080 in my laptop or whatever uh it's heavy it generates a ton of heat uh and it still will be uh obsolete in about a year or two because that's the way that gaming laptops sure. work. And they're incredibly expensive. So it's like, you know, you're paying 2500 for a top tier, not even a top tier, for like a high tier gaming high-tier laptop. High tier gaming laptop, yeah. Uh, at least 1000 for like a baseline gaming laptop, uh, which will run games for about a year and a half you know, for, a, for good graphics, and then you're just diminishing returns. Uh, I think that Stadia and stuff like that would be great for people like me who travel a lot who are like i want to just be able to bring like a low-end laptop and then play my games on it and see how it goes yeah and i I disagree with that because i i think the vast majority of people (laughs) buying gaming laptops it's their primary gaming device gaming pc so but yeah the but like those people people who actually travel with a gaming laptop i think this could kill that um because it is just a much simpler experience and a, a less costly experience over time like I guess those, those gaming laptops are so expensive and the upgrade ability is so poor but the people who if you're into even thinking about buying a fifteen hundred dollar gaming laptop you're not going to settle for this lossy compressed yeah possibly high latency like, gaming like, experience that's i would like i feel well, like i am the target market and like i absolutely would if it meant not having to carry a 15 pound laptop or you know well, and he, seven he, pound laptop here's around. the thing that i think all of this all of this streaming stuff uh we're thinking of it like killing one thing you're killing another i i i actually think most of the people signing up for this stuff especially early on this is this is not going to be their primary way to play no, games. totally like geforce now like as much as i use it and i actually do like it i still have i still have my gaming rig you know so it's like i think everyone always has their their first place that they will go to play games yeah. where, wherever it is and then you start to get extras like for me i love having a pc and then i love having the nintendo switch you know like that like the switch isn't my primary thing but it's an it's a nice 
second option. So I think all these streaming services, you're still going to have your primary piece of hardware that you own in your house or whatever. And then this is going to be a secondary thing. So when you're traveling or when you're just lazy and want to lay in bed, like I I actually don't think any of this is going to kill any of that. I think this is just saying, hey, most of the people who sign up for this, this is going to be their second option. Yeah. Well, and that's why I say like gaming laptops to me are the most at risk because like I'm going to keep my desktop and I might keep a console hooked up to my, my TV, but like for travel and stuff like that, I definitely am like, it's much easier for me. The other one is like bringing my phone, like, Oh cool. I can just play halo on my phone in, you know, wherever I'm at. If I like LA last week, I had to bring a whole laptop down there, like do game stuff. And it would have been like, ah, yeah, I'll just play that it on scratches my phone. your spot. Hayden, that's enough to fulfill your gaming need is just to play. Halo uh, it depends on, on what, it, depends on what I'm playing. Yeah. For a week or like a couple of days. Like I, I travel enough that like, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, it's either that or bring your whole gaming rig from home. Like that yeah, doesn't make like, sense. Like, like I don't want to yeah. just don't play. Yeah, I mean, so, to me, it's sort of like I have a floor of like a certain kind of quality, <laughs> oh, of, quality of pixel. I have for a floor world of Warships. quality of pixel. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not going to go for that. I, I just, I just don't. <laughs> well, but you don't know how good it's going to be yet. That's yeah. the thing. Like, if it, I runs, can tell you, it won't be as good as locally total, generated. Totally, pixels. but like well, locally generated pixels. I, I was making a joke about this. Locally generated pixels are always better than a pixel shipped to you from 500 miles of away. Course, of course, of course. Right? But how? yeah, that is going to be your threshold. Is how locally, bad is it going to be? Sustainably locally farmed pixels. Way better. Better quality. <laughs> yeah. Lower latency. I think way better than I think Gordon's stuff. just a Luddite. He's, uh, not, yeah. he's against the new consoles. He's against streaming. He just hates it's, it all. No, yeah, I, he, I just he, think... Well, he loves ray tracing because it's the future, but he hates streaming because it's the future. I, I think it's... We can get... I don't want to get into the ray tracing, but I just do... I just think that I like high resolution, non-compressed totally. looking... I mean, people like look at the look at the full freak out over like, oh my god, DLSS makes a little bit, a little a little blurrier when I freeze each frame and look at each one versus. Oh come totally. on, totally. And right? I, I and think that those you're people talking about a crowd going to no, well, no, no, but they're not going to go to it. That's yeah, the thing. That's, like it's nobody's going to give up thing. their thing. You yeah. know, like nobody's going to give and up. Nobody their will thing. give up for it. And you know yeah. how it comes to every time of year. It's like, well, you know, what? let's look at the bill. What don't we use? Well, Dude. I use Netflix. You know what? Maybe I'll toss Hulu overboard. Well, no, but what's uh, a Stadia thing? But that's the thing. Like uh, I really five hours. That's the thing is I think when it's a supplemental thing, and that's why I said again, like I think xCloud is the one that is worth watching because yeah, that is because if you are just like, hey, I'm just playing the same game I was playing on my PC, but now I'm like over at a friend's house and I've got 10 minutes to kill and I can play like a couple of Civ turns or whatever. Yeah, and maybe you get like it that to me for is, Xbox and you're going to get it for PC. You yeah. get all of them at once. And, that, and that's the thing. Like that to me is the use case. Like I don't care. The Stadia stuff I don't think is the way forward. And it's just because of like Google's ecosystem and the way that they are pitching it and then the way that it's priced. But I think that Microsoft doing the same thing could be very interesting because they have hands in the PC in consoles. And then this allows them to get onto phones, onto onto uh, tablets, the stuff that you might want to take with you. If I was like, hey, I'm going to like be over at my friend's house for an afternoon. I'm not going to haul like it's not that it's not the 90s. I'm not going to haul my entire PC over. I'm not going to haul my console mm-hmm. with me, but I might bring like my phone with me because I have my phone or everywhere. Your gaming laptop. Uh, <laughs> that's your primary gaming device yeah, you not, bring over. Yeah. I, uh, but like if that was a if I could replace buying a fifteen hundred dollar gaming laptop every two years with oh, I'm just going to like play on my phone and it'll you work. use your gaming laptop for work too, Hayden. I don't know. One, it's a tax write off. Two, you do Photoshop, you're doing all those but, other things. Yeah, but most people do <coughs> not. You're, you're that's creating all I mean. your own indie game. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm curious how it'll shake out. Uh, I'm very skeptical of Google. Uh, for but yeah, G- GeForce but. Now and xCloud, if it works that yeah, way. I hope you know? xCloud yeah. ends up doing some cool stuff. Yeah, but, do you feel like when yeah. you you go over to somebody's house and they're like, they got, they're busting out and they're playing, you know, you got like a mini LAN party and you're like, check this out. I, I'm playing this on my phone. Yeah, uh, well, like what if everybody was playing on your phone? Do you Adam? really think that's ever going to work? I don't think I, so. I think Adam will be playing on his phone in a, I, you, a no, year or two. You I, just feel I, like... I already oh. do play on my phone, you know? When you're like, when you're at one of those kind of like ad hoc LAN parties, you're like, oh... No, I think man, you, I just, think we'll start seeing 12 people on their phone. You just stand there with your hands behind your back looking at people play. Have you seen all the people the, playing Fortnite like on their phone, phone. Gordon? Dude, uh, how many people played Pokemon Go on their yeah, phone? But that's, yeah, but that's playing phone against phone. 
Yeah, right? I'm, I'm I think you're going to end up with just everybody playing on their phone. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's the future you that's wanted, it, Gordon. That's your LAN party. Yeah, you're going to have six whatever. people. Yeah. Whatever. We'll see you when we get there. I think that ain't going to happen. Also, guess what? You know, you sign up for Stadia and it's running. Uh, you, you've got ray tracing. you got, you know, high-end specs in the cloud. You know, yeah. the funny yeah. thing about that, too, is when you're playing it on your phone, you're you're using it as a client. It's client focus. You're generating. It's locally, sustainably organic pixels. All right, uh, on your we're phone. running out of time here, yeah, uh, uh, so I'm sorry. We're not going to uh, get to questions yeah, again yeah, this so week. Sorry. So maybe next week, if it's a uh, if it's some, a lighter we had week, some good arguments. Yeah, maybe if it's a lighter week next week, we'll we'll do like an all questions episode or something. Sorry, I know they've been piling up in Discord. We will get to them. Uh, but Gordon, we, we got to get out. Of yeah, here. we got to get out. We've of went here. way too we long. Gotta go way we got to go play our game streams. <laughs> go play your uh, game. Thank show. God Brad wasn't here because Brad <laughs> oh, would have been man. dying. Yeah. Yeah, he would have been like, what? He would have been like, what? <laughs> Check back next week for your fix of PC Talk on the Full Nerd. For audio listeners, subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Send questions and comments to the Full Nerd at PCWorld.com. Every time you do, someone stops playing game streaming. Thanks for coming. I'm Gordon Ung with Hayden Dingman. Hey. And Adam Patrick Murray will uh, hit the streaming stop button. Yeah, weird. It's almost like people like to stream some stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe they'll stream a game. Yeah, I don't know. We'll this see. isn't local. Yeah, let's try it. Uh, let's try it later. Go stream a game. Bye. Mm-hmm.